following is a presentation of the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. Third straight week, the ACC center stage of college football. Week one, Florida State, Alabama. Week two, Clemson, Auburn tonight. Eight o'clock, prime time, Clemson, Louisville. Blackout down there as well. 565 miles away, our game at the bottom of the hour, NC State taking on Furman. Yeah, and it's pronounced Paladins, people. Get it together. A lot of symmetry here. Legendary head coach Dick Sheridan used to coach Furman as well as NC State. Coach Dave Dorn knows that. Haven't played this game since 1985. Young man Jalen Samuels didn't play in that game, but they should be careful with the Paladins. Closer than the experts might think. Look at them. They're getting ready. <laughs> We're getting ready. Huddling up here. Welcome inside the ACC Blitz, powered by Ram Trucks. I'm Katie Witham, alongside my guys, the former Virginia <laughs> linebacker <laughs> Stan Berkley and the former Clemson yeah. head coach Tommy Bowden. Guys, through two weeks of the ACC season, Coach, what have we learned so far? I tell you, one of the things I've been impressed with the first week and surprised about has been Duke and how they manhandle Northwestern. Looks like Duke is back from not going to bowl last year. And then the year of the quarterback, Lamar Jackson? No, not Lamar Jackson. What about Taquan Marshall at Georgia Tech? What about Josh Jackson, Virginia Tech? Kelly Bryant at uh, Clemson? Uh, and yeah. <laughs> what about Ryan Finley at NC State? And I could go on and on. Come on, don't bury the lead. I like don't where he it. went. Uh, that dude, Kelly Bryant, is why I'm going to make this coming. In America, uh, it's not that hard. Clemson's the best team in the country. Wow. I know, I know, <laughs> Tuscaloosa. Wow. You're gonna feel some type of way. That's a wow. you problem. Easy. Clemson's defense, 14 points fewer allowed this year than in last year's championship season. Top five defense, Kelly Bryant. Oh yeah, QBR better than Lamar Jackson. Bold statements he's, already two minutes into the show. He's drinking guys. again. He's I, drinking I, again. We have I so many it. changes on our schedule. We've <laughs> got to get to the ACC headlines. Hurricane Irma forcing some changes. Five games affected. Three were canceled. Two moved. The biggest effect, a layoff for Florida State and Miami. LaMarvelous in action, put on a show in Chapel Hill. He's prime time tonight, and that is what we have to talk about, guys. A top 15 matchup. Just the fourth time ever, the reigning Heisman winner is going to take on the defending national champion. Stan, kick us off with this one. Who has the edge when it comes to this game, Louisville and Clemson? No, well, I just said Clemson was the number one team in the country. <laughs> they not have the edge. You're sticking Clearly with Clearly they have the edge, and I'll tell you largely why. Dabo Sweeney in the last three years, right, eight and one versus ranked opponents. That guy that everybody tells me is the best player in the country, even though we all know Deshaun Watson was last year. Lamar, you my boy. You know we here. But I haven't seen you win a big game yet. Oh, Ooh. Florida State, put an asterisk. No Derwin James, and it was DeAndre Francois' first true start on the road. I've yet to see Lamar Jackson beat a ranked opponent in a big game with all of us watching. But I need to see that. fair point, fair point. The last three times they've played, mm -hmm. Louisville has lost by a combined 15 <laughs> points. Yeah. These have been close games. What's it going to take, Coach, for Louisville to get over the edge, get over the hump tonight? Well, I don't think there's any doubt that Clemson will be favoring the game, but Lamar Jackson brings you unique problems for Brent Venables in that defense. Number one, you hear people say, well, he extends plays with his feet. What does that mean? The fact that most pass plays are somewhere between two and three seconds. Defensive backs are honed in. Their bodies are acclimated to covering that long. Clemson usually has a sack by then. But with his ability to stem the play, all of a sudden, defensive back, the little loose, he shuts the motor down, and all of a sudden, you got Jalen Smith the wide or Louisville uh, receiver who right now leads the ACC with 150 yards per game. The big play because the extended play of Lamar Jackson. We heard you mention Brent Venables. He's a guy you're very familiar <laughs> with. And so many problems that Lamar Jackson poses for this defense. Yeah, I tell you, I tried to steal Brent Venables about 11 I years, too. Years, <laughs> years ago when I was at Clemson. I called yeah. Bob Stoops and said, listen, I want to come out and I want to study your defense and see how you're doing with turnovers. But when I went out there, I had my eyes on a young linebacker coach named Brent Venables and tried to steal him but couldn't do it but again he'll have his hands full versus Lamar Jackson. I love the words you use that turnover word <laughs> not only does Burt Venables have nothing but dogs up front and let me be clear I've talked to NFL people since the season started all four of those Clemson defensive linemen all four of them potential first round picks they all have first one first round grades you use the word turnover 
That LaMarvelous guy that everybody keeps telling me is the best player in the country, and he is, he's just not the best leader and the best quarterback in the country yet. Louisville, in the last three years, has turned the ball over a ton. That Venables defense takes the ball away a ton. Guys, we're out of time, <laughs> but I have to ask you because you know about linebackers. Is this the best front four in the nation, Clark? This is the best front, best front seven in the country. It's not that close. All right, well, it's going to be fun to watch them in action. We mentioned Lamar Jackson, Kelly Bryant. What about this quarterback, our guy, Ryan Finley? He's thrown more than 700 yards. Phillip Rivers, the only to do that. More blitz after this. by Ram Truck. Somebody who's a mess and who's absolute chaos is Stan's favorite guy, Bradley Chubb. Listen, projected first round pick, leads the ACC in tackles for a loss, the most disruptive force on the edge. No bowl, bowl or no bowl, coming up next. Stick around. <laughs> So we're doing again this year, bowl or no bowl, putting these guys in the hot seats. But before I make them make their picks this year, we have to look back and, you know, judge them. See how they did. Do we really? Last year, we do. Everybody makes rookie I mistakes. I like this so let's, look back, <laughs> let's look back at yours. Not too shabby. 13 of 14. The only one you missed was that one in white, Boston College. I can't believe I missed one. Usually I'm right on spot on this. But again, Boston College struggled last year on offense. Do you think and his again, arm gets tired from patting himself on his back? Listen, I, mean, I, I, I should have been the one patting him. He tried to get me on that Wake Forest train. I didn't buy it. I also didn't see our coach doing it at NC State, doing what they did. I've congratulated them. I should have gotten that Wake Forest deal. But 11 out of 14 on my maiden voyage. Wait, we're going we're gonna to get stand a participation trophy. I don't want this thing. I'm not a millennial. Give him a little certificate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love it. All right. Let's talk this season and put you guys back in the hot seat. We are going to go age before beauty over here. Georgia defer, Tech sorry. coach, yeah. bowl or no bowl? I think Georgia Tech will go. A couple, couple things they have. Number one, Taquan Marshall, the quarterback. A pleasant surprise. Second, the ACC in rushing. In that offense, the offense is the great equalizer, the triple option. So, again, I think they, get, they, get, they go. You buying that? What do you think? <sighs> I think Georgia Tech has been impacted by giving, they tricked off the game in Atlanta against Tennessee, that's first. Then we have Irma that keeps them from playing against uh, Central Florida. So those are two games. And then I look at, at Miami, at Clemson, and in the year versus University of Georgia, who's looking pretty good right now on defense. I don't think it happens for the Jackets. They play four teams that were in the final top 25 last season this year. All right, let's talk Wake Forest. Coach, bowl or no bowl? Oh, I think Wake Forest goes to a bowl for a couple reasons. Number one, scheduling, Presbyterian, Utah. Tall State, Appalachian State. They've already beaten Boston College. Scheduling oh, yeah. at Notre Dame. They got to play oh, yeah, the Wolfpack. The They're Notre playing Dame. Duke. What Those, is Notre Dame? They're playing Duke, Duke, who you said is Notre a great Dame. team. You're allowed six losses. All he's got to do is come up. Right now, they All lead right. the ACC in turnovers. They're playing good enough, got enough depth to get that six win. Okay. Defense is a lot better this year than it even it was a year ago. Very I'm learning from my uh, inexperience last year. I'm going bold for Wake Forest because Coach said do so. Moving on, hail the pit, guys. Let's talk pit Panthers. Coach Bowler, uh, no bowl. I think Pitt will get it again. They've already got a victory versus Youngstown State, Rice, Syracuse, Virginia. That's three more wins. Menarduzzi's the special. He is the coach that gets the upsets. Last year, beating Penn State, beating Clemson. He'll get another couple. Uh, Pitt will get into the You talk the schedule. Game. They have seven at home. I have to think that helps. What do you think, though? Do they make it? Pitt still playing Oklahoma State today? They are. They yes. did play Penn State last week, right? What did he right? just say? Upset. He's that, a guy that's, that's, that's two losses, right? He's uh, a specialist. Uh, it, specialist and upsets. Uh, is Max Brown still the quarterback at Pitt? That was a close game last year with Oklahoma He's State. He's next to last in passer rating in the conference. They got oh. no chance. No bold Pitt Panthers. If you call me a hater, that's fine. That's the sports man. We, we'll work we might call you a hater over here. Max Brown, it's time to step up and prove him wrong. We love doing it. Let's Lying take a look people, at the Max. rest of Coach and Stan. Picks and coach Mr. Positivity 11 headed to a bowl game. You play 12 games. When I first started coaching, and played 11, a little more difficult. If you can't win six out of 12, then uh, y'all do what I do TV. <laughs> coach, that's matching the record in the conference last year 11 teams making it in. He's got that many going back again. I started this show, Katie and Coach, saying, Hey, listen, we're going to take a step back in this conference. If you look at the teams that were on the right side of that column, those were teams that have either transfer first year quarterbacks, Max Brown and Pitt or they're starting redshirt freshman or true freshman. It's not enough experience. Uh, I see another participation trophy coming. <laughs> oh, tell me about it. Hey, that's it for us. We are headed 
out to Carter Finley Stadium. We will be back with you at halftime. NC State taking on Furman. Tom Wormy, Dave Archer, and our new guy, DJ Shockley, is on the call. This one today, going to be a good one. You heard Stan mention it, a series that began in 1902. They're back in action today. Tom, take it away. One pack, one go. Thanks, Katie. Here in Raleigh, North Carolina, the NC State Wolfpack taking the field at Carter Finley Stadium as they get ready for the matchup with the Furman Paladins. The first time these two teams will meet in 32 years. Here's our ACC Network Game of the Week presented by Mellow Mushroom, NC State, and Furman out of the Southern Conference. So great to have you with us for our game this afternoon. Tom Wormy along with Dave Archer. DJ Shockley will join us from the sidelines in just a moment. NC State, Dave, one and one on the season, coming off a win against Mark. Marshall here at Carter Finley Stadium. Ryan Finley is their quarterback. He has thrown for over 300 yards in each of their first two games. Ryan Finley, a graduate transfer from Boise State, had a solid year a year ago. But with the offseason in the system is a, and being elected to the leadership council, Finley is off to an outstanding start. 74% completion percentage, and Tommy hadn't thrown it to the other team. When you start looking at the other side of the football for NC State, this is a nasty front seven for NC State, and they're led by the alpha male that's Bradley Chubb. Chubb's a three-down player, plays his keys against the run game, 22 and a half sack, 22 and a half tackles for loss a year ago. But when he comes off the ball against the, the pass rush, he has outstanding move to the inside, puts the quarterback on the ground. Tom, 10 and a half sacks a year ago, big time player. And also an all-conference selection of the ACC. The Paladins are just a couple of plays away, Dave, from being 2-0 and as opposed to 0-2. They've got Thomas Gordon, a weapon on the edge. Yeah, young football team for Coach Hendricks, but Thomas Gordon is, is stepped up as one of those big play guys for him, yeah, averaging almost 30, 30 yards a catch coming out of the backfield and on the outside. So they're going to need him to make some big plays. And, Shock, when you talk about ballers, NC State has one they want to feature. Yeah, you talk about ballers, playmakers, that all applies to wide receiver Jalen Samuels. I believe he's arguably the most versatile player in all of college football. Expect to see him in running back, receiver, in the slot. He'll be all over the field today and a true mismatch for any defense. I expect him to go out and have a huge game today and continue his streak of 30 straight games with the catch. Tom Arch, back to you guys. DJ, thank you. We look forward to your reports all afternoon long from the sidelines here at Carter Finley Stadium. NC State won the toss. They have elected to defer 84 degrees, 55% humidity, and a light breeze from the Northeast here in Raleigh, North Carolina, the ACC Game of the Week. It's presented by Mellow Mushroom. So glad that you are with us as Kyle Bambard. We'll put it in the air to start our game. Week three of the college football season, NC State 1-1. One one. The Furman Paladins 0-2 out of the football championship subdivision. This will be Thomas Gordon a couple of yards deep. Takes the advice of his teammate. He'll stay in the end zone. Here are impact players brought to you by Food Lion. Dave, we start with Furman. Well, Matthew Schmidt, the senior of this young offensive line, they're going to need Schmidt to play extremely well. 29 career starts. He's the leader up front. And a young guy, one of those young guys, Darius Moorhead, the running back averaging six yards a carry. This is a team that's going to need to stay on schedule, but they're also going to need to make some big plays, some chunk plays. We talked about Thomas Gordon. Moorhead going to have to do the same. P.J. Blaze Jowski is the senior quarterback from St. Augustine, Florida, making his 16th career start in a Furman uniform day. Yeah, he's, an, he's a tough kid, leader. They're going to need to be all of that against this front seven for NC State. Paladins will keep it on the ground. Thomas Gordon trying to stretch it out. Can't do it against this NC State defense. Kentavious Street making the play. Here's our food line impact players on the other side of the ball for the Wolfpack. Well, this is an outstanding, like I said, front seven. It's really good. And, and Jared Fernandez, the, the linebacker, he and his battery mate, Arius Moore, have played every game together from freshman to senior. And Darian Rose, Roseboro is a guy they come in in a sub package, will sub in at the defensive end spot. And all he's done is camp himself in the backfield of the opposite. Position. Roseboro, the junior from Lincoln to North Carolina, on the edge of that front four and front seven. So devastating against opposing offenses. Clay Hendricks, the head coach, in his first year for the Furman Paladins, trying to iron things out here on offense. They lost two yards on that first play from scrimmage. Two very close losses, as we mentioned, Dave. They lost to Elon last week, 34-31, and lost by a single point to Wofford in a SoCon game, 24-23, to start the season. 
I think the officials had a special ball they wanted to use on second down. Had to go to a local Walmart to pick it up. <laughs> Antonio Wilcox swallowed up by a host of red shirts. He also lost two on that play. A gain of two, rather. Wilcox back to the original line of scrimmage. Justin Jones on the stop. Well, he talked about Schmidt. They want to play a little bit of pace, but they want to be careful. And Schmidt is a guy kind of running the show up front, the senior. Having a tough time blocking that front four. It's going to be an all-day job for Furman up front to handle NC State in their front four in this run game. Fifth year on the sidelines for Dave Dorn. Seventh year overall as a head coach. Plays Jowski's pass complete near the 30. That's Tristan Luke goes out of bounds near the 30-yard line, and a flag has come out at the tail end of the play as Jared Fernandez forced him out. Five yards on the play for Furman. Potentially unnecessary roughness along the sideline. Rough in the pass. Defense number nine. 15-yard penalty. First down. Chubb comes off the back backside and just that last, last little bump against the quarterback, and they really, and rightly so, quarterbacks take a lot of shots that are blind shots, and that's our. Yeah, we talked about in the opening, Bradley Chubb. This is a, he's a guy that, uh, Tom, a lot of the NFL scouts are looking at as a potential number one draft pick. He's a big-time player off that edge. 39 career tackles for loss. Eighth in school history. Now there's a timeout on the field. It's going to be an official's timeout. Very early in our first quarter, the penalty is going to give Furman a first down situation. In the middle of that huddle is Clay Hendricks, a former player at Furman University. In fact, Dave, we mentioned in the open that this rivalry dates back to 1985. That was the last time they played, and Hendricks was a member of that team. In fact, they won in 84 and 85 here at NC State against the Wolfpack. Time for our Carolina Ford keys to the game with Dave Archer. Well, the big part of it for Furman was to stay on schedule, uh, and that means you've got to keep manageable down and distance situations to move the change put points on the board for NC State they wanted to start fast and Dave Dorn emphasized that a number of times in our meetings with him yesterday did that almost had a three and out but a penalty extends the drive for Furman there's the pitch Darius Moorhead into NC State territory and close to a first down before Arias Moore makes the tackle for the back. Tom, we got a chance to talk with Bradley Chubb he, uh, this week and he talked about assignment football and you have to don't trust your eyes. You got to trust your trust what you're doing from a practice standpoint. That time Furman outflanks him with the youngster Moorhead. He's averaging six yards a carry. He's one of those big play guys they want to feature in this option attack. Red shirt freshman from Nashville, Tennessee. First down for Furman from the 45 of NC State. It'll be Ridge Gibson. They get four yards for the Paladins. We've got a cool little rotation with the backs, Tom. Tristan Luke, who caught the pass on third down. They saw the Darius Moore run, and now here's Ridge Gibson, who's their, their fullback or B-back, if you like, in this option attack. They, they've got about four or five guys they want to feature, and that makes it tough for NC State to lock into someone in particular to try to defend. Second and six. Gibson, number 33 on the call once again. He'll get two. B.J. Hill, Contavia Street, number 35, combining on the stop. Unlike the first three downs that Furman Ed was on offense, they had a couple of negative plays here. They've stayed on schedule. The, the key we talked about it now, a very manageable third and five, where you could potentially run and go for it on fourth down or throw the football. Here. This season, the Paladins, 46%. On third down, here's third and short. The pass complete inside the 35-yard line. And down to the 28 for Andy Shumpert as Blaze Jowski found him converting on third down. Ten yards and a first down. Yeah, very good against the zone here. Good read by Shumpert to sit it down quickly. Immediately, Blaze Jowski's on, him, on the target with the football. So, again, on schedule, they can run the little zone control passes. Good quick throw from the quarterback. Shumpert, the senior from Brentwood, Tennessee. Making the catch and the conversion on third down inside the 30. Blaze Jowski, pitch, Moorhead. Not a whole lot on the edge for Moorhead as Bradley Chubb is out there. Also Arius Moore. Good job. Perimeter by NC State to defend the run game. 
play, make the quarterback pitch it. I thought Grace Yossi could have threatened Chubb a little bit more, and then Moore is on the outside, right in position, fell off the block, was able to make the play for no gain. It'll be the first man who goes through. Tristan Luke runs into a roadblock at the line of scrimmage. You know, you know, Tom, another part about what Furman's able to do after the penalty on Chubb is to stay on the field. They're eating clock. We're now nearing five minutes off the clock. That means NC State's offense, which has been explosive this year so far, is standing on the sidelines, antsy waiting for their opportunity. Ten play drive now for Furman. Third and nine for the Paladins. Blazjowski pressured in the pocket, and he's going down at the 29. He'll lose one. Bradley Chubb on the sack. It'll be his second of the season for the captain. Well, we talked all those superlatives about Chubb. His ability to defend the run, his speed rush. This is a speed rush here. He runs around the back, and I think that might have been a mistake. Why is your back blocking arguably one of the best defensive ends in the country? But that was the matchup. Chubb won and was able to get the quarterback on the ground. So Grayson Atkins, the freshman, with the field goal attempt from 46 yards away. Just his third attempt of his career, and Atkins is on the money. 46 yards away, that's a new season long for Atkins, who had hit one from 25 yards away against Elon last week. Furman strikes first, Grayson Atkins, a 46-yard field goal, and the Paladins have a 3-0 lead. ACC football is brought to you by Mellow Mushroom, out of this world pizza. By your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. By Progressive Insurance. And by Coke. A spectacular day on the NC State campus in the capital city of Raleigh, North Carolina. The Furman Paladins striking first. And leading 3-0 on the field goal by Atkins just a moment ago. NC State 1-1 one one on the season. Naheem Hines, watch out for this young man. Twice he's taken it back from 100 yards. The only player in school history to do so here at NC State as they celebrate 125 years of college football. About four yards deep and Hines We'll stay there. Time for the food line impact players, and we start with NC State on offense, Dave. I mean, look at Kevin Harmon, outstanding young receiver, back-to-back 100-yard -back games and receiving. First time that's happened in the first two games since Corn Robinson in 2000. Jalen Samuels, you heard Shaka talk about Jalen Samuels. He's going to line up all over the field. They'd like to give him the ball a number of times. We might even see a tailback a little bit more today than he's been doing in the first two games. Ryan Finley, we talked about it, Tom, and I discussed 74% completions, almost 800 yards, and the touchdowns to interception ratio exactly where you want it. Finley up considerably on that completion percentage from last year, where he completed 60% of his passes in his first year with an NC State uniform. That is complete. Out on the edge to Samuels, ridden out of bounds. 28-yard line, he got three. We'll continue with our food line impact players. Chris Washington, probably the best of the edge rushers when he started attacking this, this pass protection. He also leads the team in tackles. And Joe Farrar, an interesting guy, only about 205 pounds, will play a kind of a linebacker nickel position, but he is their emotional and get after you leader on the defensive side. Second down for the Wolfpack. Finley tries the other side. Lewis up towards the 40 and a first down for NC State. Steph Lewis on the grab and 12 yards for the Wolfpack. Tom already trying to stretch Furman out defensively. First play Samuels one way and there you go back the other way with the quick screen to the outside. Trying to stretch the Furman defense. Good blocking in the perimeter and they have a first down. From the 40 yard line for the Wolfpack. Two starting linebackers for Furman have gone down with injuries. Dylan Woodruff, the senior out, and Alex Birch, who was slated to start, unable to go for the Paladins this afternoon. Finley wants to launch it again. Swings it out to the 45-yard line, and Kelvin Harmon 
Well, Har Harmon is the young man that they're really excited about on the outside. His great speed, rounding into a full service wide receiver, if you will. The short throws, the over the middle throws, and the deep shots. Uh, go to guy. Harmon had 121 yards receiving a week ago here at Carter Finley Stadium in the win against Marshall. 37 to 20. That's up near midfield and caught. And now just into Paladin territory, five yards, and those chains are going to roll again. Locklear on the catch. Now they've got a number of receivers here that are excited about. Locklear plays that interior part, plays in the slot. This is a quick and accurate throw by Finley to extend the drive. Ryan Finley is four for four, Dave, and they are among the best of the ACC with that passing offense. Yeah, trails only Lamar Jackson. He's got a big game coming up tonight against the Clemson Tigers. We'll talk about that a little bit more as the afternoon progressive progresses. Jalen Samuels inside the 40-yard line for 10 yards for Samuels. But Tom Samuels had only come in carrying the ball three times on the year in the first two games, and this is the place that they he's so talented they don't want to lock him in the backfield for fear they don't get to use him enough. Another pass, another completion, no incomplete, incomplete. Cole Cook was the intended receiver. Tom, talking about Samuels, and you and I are amazed at watching him and looking at him on tape. I want to bring in DJ Shockley, who's along our sideline now. Shock, uh, Samuels, you talked about in the opening. He, I don't think he's come uncomfortable anywhere he lines up. Have a bit of a problem with shock, so we'll we'll get to DJ along the sidelines here in a few moments. Hines to the 32-yard line and seven yards on the rush. Brian O'K okay made the tackles. We go down to the sidelines and DJ Shockley. Yeah, you guys talk about what Jalen Samuels brings to this team. He's a guy who we talk about versatile. He loves to be in that spot where he can get the ball in his hands. And Coach Dorn said, we have to find a way to get the ball. He's the guy who said, I want eight-plus catches a game. That's his personal goal, and NC State does a good job of trying to get him the football. Well, I think he's going to maybe get eight-plus carries in this game as well. Keep it on the ground for the Wolfpack on the right side, barreling through his hinds to the 20, dragging a couple of white shirts with him. Inside the 20 of the Paladins, Naheem Hines as Enor made the tackle at 12 yards. Yeah, we wanted to talk about Samuels and bring him up, but every time we got him up, then Eli Drinkowitz, the offensive coordinator, said, hey, don't forget about Naheem Hines. He said he is as violent a runner as he ha they have on their team, and he's not a very big guy at 5'9", 200 pounds. Said Hines runs angry when he gets his hands on the football. He's going to do it again down to the 15-yard line. He got four on that play. So into the red zone now for Dave Dorn at NC State. Our first and ten line presented by Cookout serving fresh char grilled hamburgers and 40 fancy milkshakes. From the 15 of Furman. Second down for the Wolfpack. Hines inside the 10 and close to another first down. Well, or had to make the tackle, Dave. Hines does an excellent job there of kind of pressing the line of scrimmage and sliding to the hole. This guy has got big time speed. Returns kickoffs. Tom talked about the 100-yard kickoff returns. Two of those. Only guy in NC State history to have those. But it is a, it is closed the door if this kid gets in the open field. First and goal, 11th play of the drive. Hines angling to the goal line and stops short at around the two. Nice job of Eli Drinkowitz, the offensive coordinator, really mixing play calling up. We've seen a couple of screens, though. This is another one. Get the screen to Hines. Talked about his great speed. And, and then Tom talked about how he runs angry. You see all of that in this play here. And this has been an excellent drive for NC State. Physical up front in the run game, and Finley very accurate throwing the football in the perimeter. Difficulties in the red zone this season for NC State. Come up with five TDs on nine trips. It's a small sample size, but that's near the bottom of the conference in the red zone. See if they can cash it in with Samuels to the goal line, and he's in. Jalen Samuels takes it in for the Wolfpack from two yards out. Jalen 
Samuels at tailback. They overloaded one side of the line, made a pre-snap shift, overloaded. You see that right side? As you look at the screen here, Samuels gets in behind that and punches it in the end zone. He just scores touchdowns, man. First rushing touchdown of the season to Jalen Samuels. He now has 17 rushing TDs for his career. But NC State for the senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Well, Jalen Samuels, we've been lauding what he can do. He shows it right there. 7-3, we'll be back. You're watching ACC football presented by Mellow Mushroom. Here's our drive summary brought to you by Lending Tree. When banks compete, you win. Well, Ryan fin Finley effective on that drive, Dave. He really was, Tom. Five of six, five different receivers caught the football for him. I think it was extremely accurate. And give Eli Drinkwitz a ton of credit. The OC really mixed the play calling. Different guys touching the football. I think they got up to the start they were looking for offensively. Jalen Samuels finished off the drive with a two-yard TD run, the 34th touchdown of his career. That's Thomas Gordon, the deep man for the Paladins. Also, Bailey Rogers is back there. This is going to be Gordon from the six. And up to the 25. 19-yard return down to DJ Shockley. Guys, as Furman comes back on offense, one of the biggest things that defensive line coach Kevin Patrick for NC State spoke to his guys about, specific the, old, the defensive line and linebackers, watch our angles, watch your eyes, protect your eyes, make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, especially when they're coming down on the option. A lot of guys got out of place and they made some big plays on this drive, so their angles and eyesight is big on this drive. That's a great point. We talked to Bradley Chubb as well. He said we've got to be assignment-oriented against this multi-option attack. Flag comes out on first down for the Paladins. False start. Offense, number 66. Five-yard penalty, first down. Trey Blake is our referee this afternoon in the ACC officiating crew. Now, this is where it makes it tough, Tom, when you, when you back it up and you get a little bit off the schedule of the 10-yard chain. So somebody's going to need to make an extra play here, a little bit more yards on one of these option plays to get yourself back on schedule. Coach Hendricks paying particular attention to the offensive lineman. That's where he played in the early to mid-80s at Furman. That's Luke up close to the 25. And let's go back to our Charlotte studio and Katie with him. Thanks, Tom. Our Hardy's update takes us over to Heinz Field, where Oklahoma State is all over Pitt. This is the third big play of the day from Mason Rudolph, what, 69 yards to Marcel Aitman. We're accustomed to Pitt giving up big plays because the defensive line can't tackle. Tom, they are up 21-0 in the first quarter. Wow. That's uh, the game that Pitt hoped to get some revenge from as they lost out in Stillwater a year ago. But that non-conference schedule for the Panthers had to play at Penn State last week and now hosting Oklahoma State. We'll keep you updated on the ACC action throughout the afternoon with Stan Tommy and Katie in the studio. Five-yard play for Furman. Yeah, Morehead flows out of the safety spot, the sophomore, to make the play. NC State has been incredibly good other than a couple of plays of trusting their technique and what they were taught this week to defend this this option attack is it's going one way and then all of a sudden it's going the other way doing an excellent job more it flows out of the middle of the field to make the play third and eight for Furman plays Jowski little bit of time for the 35 and incomplete he's looking for Darius Moorhead Jonathan Alston there, defensively number five for NC State, fourth down. Down the former wide receiver, Alston moved over this year from corner, from wide receiver to corner, does an excellent job in bump and run right there. Well thrown ball by Blazjowski, uh, but Alston right there to bat it out there with the right hand. J.C. Hollingsworth, the senior from Greenwood, South Carolina, will punt to Naheem Hines. See what he's done so far this season on punt returns for number seven in red. Wants that fair catch, and he will make it at the 40 33 yard punt. We'll be back after a word from your local ACC station. 
Game day doesn't start with the whistle. It starts with the tailgate. And Bojangles famous chicken and biscuits. It's yeah. Bojangles! A beautiful afternoon here in Raleigh, and the tailgating has never been better. It's boat time at Bojangles. Grab a big bow box. Feed the whole group with Bojangles chicken, biscuits, fixins, and tea. Remember, it's always boat time when you're tailgating, especially in Raleigh, North Carolina. 7-3 Wolfpack. They've got the ball their own 40-yard line. Scored on the previous drive on a... Short run by Jalen Samuels. And just a drop there by Naheem Hines in the right flat. Had something set up for him in his screen game. And uh, I'm going to deflect it the line of scrimmage. Just take a look here. Yeah, Hamp gets his le left hand in there. Or got it batted. I guess tipped it. And that really distorts the ball coming in. The timing of the ball coming in for Hines. Sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina on that defense for the Furman Paladins out of the Southern Conference and the Football Championship Subdivision. Reggie Gillespie gets his number called up close to the 43-yard line. Give him three yards on the rush for Gillespie, the junior from High Point, North Carolina. Yeah, Elijah McCoy, 23, is a freshman. How about he coming downhill and makes a play against Gillespie in the hole? That's a good read by the young linebacker from Rome, Georgia. Comes downhill for the Paladins and makes the play. They got a lot of young players on this defense. Thanks for the time. McCoy just one of them. How about this defensive look? Finley deflected, caught at the 40-yard line. Jalen Samuels on a deflected pass from Ryan Finley. Just talked about how hard it is to track the ball after it's tipped. Perfect position by McCoy, the guy that made the play just the. Just the play before goes right through his hands, and Jalen Samuels, the senior, makes a big time catch. 17 yards on that completion. First down, Wolfpack, back to the air and to the boundary. Caught by Steph Lewis. Well, Samuels worked in the middle of the field on the play previous to the right of your on the right of your screen. Finley surveys, scans all the way backside. Good coverage. And distribution in the zone, and how about the catch on the tip ball by Jalen Samuels? A couple of catches in the game so far for Samuels. That means he's gone 31 consecutive games with at least one catch. Gillespie. Head down to the sidelines. More on Samuels, DJ. Yeah, guys, when I had a chance to talk to him earlier this week, he said his high school coach always taught him to put his face mask on the ball, which ultimately means if you have your eyes on the ball, there's no way you can take your eyes off of it. So he, he uses that to his strength, and that's one thing he always takes when the balls come anywhere in his area, face mask on the ball. 55 catches a year ago for Samuels. That's Gillespie across the 30-yard line. He'll be close to a first down as he got three yards on the play. It will be a first down for NC State. Don't forget, next Saturday, we're going to Atlanta, Georgia. The Pittsburgh Panthers, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. The last two years, it's come down to a field goal, and the Panthers have come away with a win in both of those games. That'll be next week, the ACC Game of the Week, presented by Mellow Mushroom from Bobby Dodd Stadium. Finley, wide open man to the end zone. Touchdown, NC State. Ramos made the grab, 30 yards on the play. Well, coming right at you. Coming out of the backfield and then up the sideline. A little combination route on the outside. Tight end. Made the grab on the outside. Excellent throw by Finley. Hit him in stride for the touchdown. But you see how Kelvin Harmon in a moment affected the coverage. Extra point from Wise is good. 14-3 late in the first. Watch the effect that Harmon has right here. He's going to go up and run the post. I'm sorry, this man, I apologize. This man going to run the post. Going to drag these two defenders with him. And the slot receiver just going to run the wheel route. And a perfect throw by Finley.
Michael Ramos with his first catch of the season, and it's a touchdown for NC State. 30 yards on that connection, Ryan Finley. With that TD, it's his sixth passing touchdown of the season. Let's go to Katie. Thanks, Tom. A Hardy's update takes us to Durham, where the Baylor Bears got on board first. But here comes Duke, coach. Uh, Duke offensive lineman, hat on a hat. Sean Wilson, 50-yard touchdown run. You said it. Duke is for real this year. Tie ball game. Katie, thank you. The Blue Devils 2-0, trying to move to 3-0. The young quarterback, Daniel Jones, running the show for David Cutcliffe. Not far from where we are here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Gordon Rogers is deep. Just 43 seconds to go in our first quarter. It's going to be Gordon, a couple of yards deep. He'll keep it there. Let's go around the ACC. It's presented by Mattress Firm. We check in on three different games in progress. And Katie just told us about Duke and Baylor, Dave. Yeah, Duke off to an outstanding start. Daniel Jones was terrific last week. And good battle between him and Baylor. Virginia got a good start in their game. And of course, uh, some games later on. How about uh, the one at the bottom of the screen? That's, that's got some little national implications to it, too, not just the ACC. Clemson Tigers beat them last year. In fact, they've won the only three meetings between the two programs. Boston College and Notre Dame. That's a 3.30 the last time they played. A couple of years ago, they played at Fenway Park, a close win for Notre Dame, which will play five opponents out of the ACC this season. Blazjowski trying to run away from Chubb. And that is a tall order when number nine is bearing down on you, able to get it away and throw it incomplete near his own bench. He showed up on campus as a freshman as a 240-pound linebacker. Now he's a 280-pound monster that can run on the outside. And if you don't get this ball off on her, look, look how quickly Chubb closes 280 pounds. There's some people at the next level in the NFL pretty excited about that guy. His father Aaron played linebacker at Georgia in the 80s. Cousin Nick, a running back. For the Bulldogs also. Brother plays in the NFL for the Lions. Moorhead. Didn't quit on the run and got up near the stick. Yeah, good hard running by Darius Moorhead. Came in the leading rusher for the Paladins. And boy, once he gets downhill, he's got great speed and he got some power as well. 5-9-180 top. But, you know, got some got some leg drive. Got the first down. Yeah, got 10 yards on that rush. Moorhead, by the way, was tackled by Moorhead. Jarius on the defense for NC State. You've been waiting for that one. Today, <laughs> First and ten Paladins. Gibson. Not a lot for Gibson, maybe a yard, and that should be the final play of the first quarter. B.J. Hill making the stop for NC State. The Wolfpack. Couple of touchdowns, one on the ground, one through the air, and they lead the Paladins 14-3 in Raleigh. Our first quarter stats are brought to you by the North Carolina Education Lottery, celebrating 11 years and over $5 billion raised for education. To learn more, visit nclottery.com. Yeah, winning on third down, that's a, that's a big difference in the game. Time of possession, pretty equal, but you got to stay on the field. And an opportunity to score, and certainly NC State's done that. NC State has its troubles on third down a week ago in the win against Marshall, three for ten. This one down the seam and just too far for the receiver, Andy Shumpert. Yeah, and Blazowski's going to get a little bit of pressure, which flattens the throw out. He, he needs a little more trajectory. If he puts a little trajectory on the ball, and it really actually it was a pretty clean pocket. He just rushed himself, and he knows. He, he ruined an opportunity right there. If he put a little more air in the ball, I think that's a completion of the big play for the Paladins. Blazjowski does have a TD toss this season. It was a 77-yard touchdown play. That was in the losing effort against Elon last week as this is Luke around the corner, and he breaks free down the sideline. Tristan Luke cut down at the 20. Jarius Moorhead made the tackle for the back. Well, Tom, this is a blown assignment. They come with a corner blitz. 
to the side of the option. Chubb takes the quarterback. And you saw the blitzing corner come right past the runner. They had this diagnosed. This was going to be a tackle for loss. Watch the corner come inside, 21, and bouncing to the outside for a 45-yard run for the Paladins. Is Luke. What a good job to read that and then get to the edge. Gibson. Short game for Gibson. And those are the kind of plays Furman needs in this game, Tom. The big play, the explosion play. Gonna be hard to go 10, 12 plays against this defense. So you need some big plays. And Luke provided one right there on really a blown assignment with that blitz coming off right into the option play. Our first and ten line presented by Cookout, serving fresh char-grilled hamburgers and 40 fancy milkshakes. From the 19 for Furman. Second and ten. Bridge Gibson. Looks like maybe the 16-yard line for Gibson. Justin Jones making the tackle. Three yards on the run. Good out of DJ quickly. Hey, Art, quick question. From your vantage point, looks like from my vantage point, NC State's defensive line doesn't really come off the football. They kind of read and react and kind of play the line of scrimmage. Is, is that kind of the gist you're seeing up there? Yeah, and it's not normally where they do it. They normally are penetrating defense, trying to keep hold their gaps to take care of that run. And another nice play on the edge right there for NC State. So they, they bow up here, Tom, in the red zone. But, Shock, I would agree with you. I think they're trying to read and react as opposed to being as aggressive up front as they normally are and give the Paladins credit for kind of forcing them or, or putting them in that position. Good play by Street on the outside. Made a couple plays outside. 34-yard field goal attempt. Grayson Atkins has already made one from 46 yards away. And the freshman from Inman, South Carolina, is two for two for the Paladins. So they get some points out of their first trip to the red zone for Clay Hendricks and Furman here in Raleigh. ACC football is being brought to you by New York Life. With the right guidance, everyone can be good at life. By Coyote Tractor. By Hardee's. And by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. The pride of the Wolfpack. That statue outside the football offices here in Raleigh at NC State. Let you know exactly where you are. The Paladins, not intimidated. They have scored a 34-yard field goal. They went 58 yards. Second field goal of the game for Grayson Atkins, 46 yards and 34 yards. Hines is the deep man for the Wolfpack on this kickoff. 17th all-time meeting between Furman and NC State, but the first since 1985. Hines laterally down the 15, out to the right side. Across midfield for Hines and finally taken down at the 42-yard line. Ellis made the tackle for the Paladins. 47 yards on the return. Tom, watch for the block. Parnum, number 28, going to come across and get a seal block right there. And Hines finds the crease. The great speed we talked about by Naheem Hines to hit it all the way down to the 42-yard line. What about a gigantic block right there by Dylan Parnum? Hines, who had a 100-yard kick return touchdown last year in the Independence Bowl win against the Vanderbilt Commodores. 41-17. So excellent field position. Furman defense to be tested once again from the 42 of the Paladins. Ryan Finley, a quarterback for NC State. The Quay Nichols on the carry there, Tom, and an outstanding job of finding a little crease in there. Four yard pickup. But you love, Tom, the rotation of backs. We've seen Hines, we've seen Velasquez, we've seen Nichols, we've seen Samuels at tailback. And 
They are they're about four deep at the tailback spot right now. Samuels with that rushing touchdown in the first quarter from two yards out. He's 34th career TD. He gets the football. Trying to elude a tackler down the sideline near the 20, but did he step out prior to that? It appears that he did at around the 26. 12 yards on the run for Samuels. Willis forced him out. Well, see him set up the block right there. Outstanding job of dipping inside, making the defender commit, and then stepping around the block in the slot area. And Samuels up the field. They can't decide what his best, his strength is. Run with the ball, catch the ball. All of it's good. Finley with the time down near the six and caught. Jalen Samuels went up to get it, and he had okay all over him. Quick play fake, held the linebackers just a count, which created that separation from second level to third level defenders, and Samuels found that area in between and takes a big hit and squeezes it inside the 10-yard line. 20 yards on that play, first and goal, NC State. They have scored on their two previous possessions in this game, both in the first quarter. Nichols again, no gain. Again, the youngster at linebacker, McCoy, 23, going to step in and make the hit. Big collision at the point of attack. The youngster's playing pretty well. He may be the guy that's down here. That is Elijah McCoy, the freshman from Rome, Georgia. So while he gets some medical attention on the field, we will step aside. Our coverage of ACC football is being broadcast on AFN, the American Forces Network. We welcome the men and women of the U.S. Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines stationed around the globe in 175 countries and on the high seas. So proud to have you with us and hope you're enjoying the broadcast. Second and goal, NC State from the six of Furman. 14-6 and 10-25 and rolling to go in our second quarter. That'll be Hines toward the goal line. Just short. Just inside the one-yard line. He went five yards off the right side. Naheem Hines. Fun to watch this kid in his acceleration. Hesitates just a second, finds the crease, and then hits it straight ahead in the angry running that Tom Wormy talked about earlier surfaced right there to push the ball to the one-yard line. So Hines will get a breather. Five rushes, 35 yards as he comes to that NC State sideline for some liquid refreshment. Elijah McCoy, who you saw, was down when we looked to break just a moment ago. Back in, but unable to stop Samuels, who goes airborne into the end zone for his second rushing touchdown of the game. A little shift to the wild wolf, if you will. Finley splits out to the right, snap it directly to Jalen Samuels. Good patient run, found that little crease he needed to dive and break the goal line. Boy, he's been as advertised as he not, Tom. Second TD today, Dave. That one just one yard as he flew into the end zone for NC State, which has now scored a touchdown on each of its possessions so far this afternoon. 21 to 6. Jalen Samuels takes that snap and does the rest. And we'll be back after a word from your local ACC station. Ram Power Play is brought to you by Ram Trucks, Guts, Glory, Ram. Kelly Bryant showed last weekend that the defending national champions still a force to be reckoned with. Bryant powered through the Auburn defense on this three-yard TD run, the first of two of the Tigers' 14-6 win. The Ram Power Play was brought to you by Ram Trucks, Guts, Glory, Ram. That coach on the blitz was talking about Kelly Bryant and how effective he was in that opening day game, and he's going to have to be effective tonight. And Clemson, on Louisville. Yeah, Clemson and Louisville from Louisville, Kentucky. Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Lamar Jackson defending Heisman Trophy winner against the national champs from a year ago. Thomas Gordon 
on the return. Jalen Samuels, Dave, a couple of rushing TDs, his first of the season today against Philly. Yeah, and he affects the game so many ways. We talked about he might get a few more carries. He obviously rushed for two touchdowns. But the guy does such a good job of affecting the pass game. It's two here, an outstanding catch on the tip ball. And, of course, this one down through the middle, fearless to come inside. Jalen Samuels with the second of his two touchdown runs today. He's a dynamic player and affects the game in so many different ways from so many different places. Let's bring in DJ Shockley on the sidelines. And guys, we always talk about his versatility, and one thing he talked about was keeping his body in, in great shape. He does treatment two, three times a day. He comes back late at night when nobody's there to get treatment, so the versatility, he has to be in shape to do it. Blaze Jowski going to be run down. Darian Roseboro, number 45, took him down for the loss. Tom, one of our food line impact players, we talked about Roseboro comes in as part of that group up front, and all he does is make tackles for 11 tackles for loss a year ago. Picks up where he left off from a season ago. Seven sacks as well as a rotation guy at the defensive end spot. Second and 18. Inside of nine minutes to go. They're just inside their own 20 for Furman. And once again, the play not allowed to develop by this NC State defensive unit. A loss of two. James Smith Williams in and there. Well, how many guys have you heard and mentioned names? Obviously, there's Bradley Chubb, but now Roseboro. James uh, Smith Williams makes a tackle in the backfield. We talked about Contavious Street. This is a hotbed for defensive linemen, NC State. Third and 20. See what the offensive coordinator, Drew Chronic, in his first year has on this long third down play. Blaze Jowski pressured. Screen pass. Luke. Stumbles down near the 28. Justin Jones on the pursuit. They got 12 yards on the play, but well short of the first down. Needed to get out past the 35 to the 37 and can't get there. Now, Justin Jones is six foot two, 315 pounds, right in the face of the quarterback. You're going to get rid of it every time. And a good job by NC State to pursue and get the runner on the ground in the screen game and a three and out for Furman. Hollingsworth to punt to Naheem Hines. They'll have to backtrack. Watch it bounce at the 18 towards the goal line and into the end zone. <laughs> Saw Naheem Hines, his expression after that punt. Let's go to Kitty with him in our Charlotte studio. Thanks, Tom. Let's take our Hardy's update. Checking in on your who's. There's my boy Kurt Banker dropping it over shoulder to Dolly, Donnie Dowling. We call him Double D, tough kid Kurt Banker, 42-yard touchdown. 40, 24 nothing at the half. Does he have the blade? Does he have the orange blazer on or the orange tie today? Well, he can uh, back it up, Dave, because it's 24 nothing <laughs> Virginia, which is one and one of the season hosting Connecticut okay. today. Good sign to see uh, some solid play out of the Cavaliers. Well, the way that punt by Hollingsworth was 71 yards, but they bring it out to the 20. As it ended up rolling into the end zone. Finley on the money at the 25. C.J. Riley is up there the 34-yard line. 13 yards on the play, first down pack. They're talking about the recruiting here at NC State. Here's a redshirt freshman, big receiver, C.J. Riley, six foot four, 205 pounds from Coconut Creek, Florida. Another target for, for Finley. Good read there back in the flat. Pulled the defender out of the way. And Riley with the catch. Just the fourth catch of the season for C.J. Riley. But we are seeing Dave Doran with many of his weapons on display, both out of the backfield and running pass routes. Finley steps up. Going deep. Diving attempt. Kelvin Harmon with an all-out layout to try to grab that one off the fingertips. Now, this was not the initial read for Finley, but a deep post route, 
by Harmon, just out of his reach by Finley. Finley started on the left, all the way on his left side, right across the field, saw the safety on the middle field, and that kid right there is going to be a star in this league. He didn't already. Just out of his reach, but a big-time player. Harmon, who amassed 235 yards receiving in the first two games, the most by a pack receiver since 03. It's a rush to the right side. Reggie Gillespie and close to a first down, but short by about a yard and a half. Immediately following today's game, our studio crew, Katie, Tommy, and Stan, live on the ACC.com, bringing you our new post-game show, Victory Formation. Tune in on the ACC.com as soon as the game is over. In-depth analysis of this game and other ACC games. The last beyond the carry. He's got enough for a first down just beyond the NC State 45-yard line and three yards on the carry. Victory formation day right after us on the ACC.com. I love it. I can't wait. Looking forward to that. I love when uh, those guys get to chopping up all the stuff that's going on in the games. We don't get to see all the games. They, they see all the games, so it's fun to watch and, and hear their analysis. We're seeing some touchdowns so far from NC State as the receiver slid down at the 43. It was an easy who slipped on the turf. Philly's pass falling incomplete. True freshman from here in North Carolina, but that was the first play that kind of looked like they were a little out of sync on where the receiver was supposed to be and where the ball was thrown. So they've been very efficient and have operated extremely well for Coach Dorn. Finley, 11 of 15, throwing 131 yards and one touchdown here in the first half. Finley has to try to get away from the pressure, and he will not. Now Donovan Perryman, the linebacker who blitzes through and makes the play here, Tom. This is really well timed by Furman. That's how they delay it. They hit it right at the snap. And so NC State up front didn't have a chance to pinch down and take away the, the most dangerous man, who was Perryman, coming through the middle. Excellent job by Furman to time up that blitz. A 12-yard loss on that second down play. Now some pressure coming off the edge. Farrar, number five. We talked about him, multifaceted guy. Threatened to come now. Furman backs out of the pressure and comes from the short side. Third and 22. Imizi near the 45. He had to get all the way to the Furman 44-yard line for a first down. Got 11 yards, but it's going to be fourth down for NC State after the catch by Emeka Imizi, the freshman from Wexaw, North Carolina. Well, nice job by NC State, or I'm sorry, by Furman to kind of disrupt this series of downs for. NC State, when they really got to a short field situation near midfield, Furman rose up defensively and snuffed out the drive. First punt of the day as Gordon waits for the punt from A.J. Cole. The flag has come out. Ball bounces near the five, grabbed by the pack at about the five-yard line, but there is a penalty marker on the punt. Again, our referee today, Trey Blake, and an ACC officiating crew. That punt was 48 yards. And we've got to sort out that penalty marker with 4.12 to go in our second quarter, 21-6, NC State. There's no foul for an illegal substitution. It'll be first down. Timeout. 4.12 to go in the half. Furman will have the ball when we come back. You are watching the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. Let's take a look at our Haviland defensive shield. It involves number nine. Bradley Chubb, the senior from Marietta, Georgia, Dave. Yeah, he has gotten off the start and kind of finishing what he did a year ago as a senior, just making his value to someone at the next level. Unbelievable. 22 tackles for loss last year, second most in NC State history. It's a pretty good D lineman here. For the guy's second two, Tom, that I think you're familiar with. Well, one of the D linemen uh, that came to play here. Was his name Mario Williams? I think it was. Mario Williams, yeah. <laughs> Mario Williams, who holds the record for career tackles for loss and for career sacks at 25 and a half. Chubb now has 18 career sacks. Trying to. He has a year like he did last year. He's going to break that record. Wilcox, two yards. 
But here it is third down for Furman, Tom. And so far in the game, we were tracking, can you stay on schedule? So far for Furman in this game, they've averaged 9.6 yards on third down to try to convert. That's going to be tough to stay on the field if that's the situation. This drive, now a manageable third down and a two-way go with throw and run here for NC State, or for Furman. Furman had been pretty good on third down conversions in their first two games. Not quite as successful so far today. We're going to get this one, though. This is Andy Shumpert making the catch and ridden out of bounds. How about that play on third down? Dave, Andy Shepard got 17 yards on this play. Well, it's a little bit of a pick play and well well done. Everybody has the little rub off or, or pick play. Shepard the benefactor there with Gordon coming back to the inside. But they, they did it so well that the officials didn't think that it was a deliberate pick. Plays Jowski. Floats it over the middle, a wide open man at midfield. It's Andy Shumpert trying to outdistance a defender to the end zone, dives for it and scores. Touchdown, Furman. Andy Shumpert from PJ Blaszczowski. Tommy, talk about discipline defensively. Play fake, looks like option. Now step back. Lost where Shumpert was in the secondary. All those secondary defenders coming up to defend run. Well done by Blazjowski with his ball handling. And Shumpert, the tight end, shoves it in the end zone. 71 yards on that play from Blazjowski to Shumpert. His first touchdown of the season. And he did it in front of his grandfather, Tom, who made the drive from Knoxville, Tennessee. Longtime mayor in Knox County, over six hours from Knoxville here to Raleigh. He's 80 years old. Just watched his grandson go 71 yards for a touchdown grab. What a moment! Look at the secondary players fly up for NC State to defend the run. Schumpert does a good job of delaying off the ball and then immediately getting in the pass route. And I said the ball handling in the backfield by the quarterback. Fake the dive, look option, and then step back and throw it. Well done by Furman right there from their execution standpoint. Great play call from offensive coordinator Drew Cronick, who joins Clay Hendricks in his first year as the Furman head coach. Successful playing career. And a former Furman assistant did spend some time at the Air Force Academy as well, Dave. But through and through, a Furman man, and he's back leading the Paladins this year. Yeah, and he credits his former coach, Dick Sheridan, who came to NC State to be an outstanding coach. He actually was a GA here his first two years as a coach. When he got into that realm, he was a GA for his former head coach at Furman. Now the head coach here at NC State was Dick Sheridan. And uh, he credits his former coach with a lot of the stuff that he teaches now to his kids. But what a great opportunity for a guy to come back to his alma mater and be the head guy. And with Dick Sheridan, the coach of those wins for Furman here at NC State in 84 and 85. This will be Hines out to the 24-yard line on the return. Let's head down to DJ Shockley for Gatorade. Heard around the cooler. Now you talk about Coach Sheridan, Coach, Coach Hendricks. Those are two guys who are who are embedded. Uh, you talk about some of the things that he's learned. He's put everything into everything they've done in this program. Everything they teach is about him. They go back and they practice. They uh, everything they prepare for is everything surrounded around Coach Coach Sheridan, and he's learned a lot from him over his time, especially what he's done with his program now. Yeah, it's a shock. And when you talk about uh, Coach Hendricks, three times they won the SoCon under Sheridan with. Hendricks on the field as an O-lineman, so pretty cool that the synergy between these two campuses. Finley's pass to the 28-yard line caught by Kelvin Harmon for four yards. Trying to get into that hurry up a little bit with, uh, with two minutes, just, just over two minutes to go. Finley. Lewis. First down, NC State. We talked to Coach Dorn as we look at this two-minute run. Coach Dorn talked about the uh, one of the unsung parts of his team is his wide receiver core. We've seen a number of them make plays. Now, Steph Lewis has a catch. Quick release and caught Lewis again. 
Steph Lewis. Nine yards on that play, taken out by Jordan Willis. Jordan look, at their, Willis look at their first two weeks in the two-minute drill, and it's worked out pretty good. As a result of being a touchdown, that's what you're looking for. Efficient, take care of the ball, make some plays. Tough loss in week one against South Carolina, 35-28 at Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. Here's Hines right side, busting on through and to the 45 of the Paladins. 11 yards on the run by Naheem Hines. Yeah, sprinkle in the run game. Elijah Drinkowitz, uh, the OC, sprinkles in the run with Hines. Remember, the clock stops as you make a first down in the college ranks. Paladins with a player now. A.K. Olasanya is the player down, number 10, in white and purple near midfield with 1.43 to go, and NC State leading 21-13. Here's the AP Top 25. It's brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Five teams from the ACC in that Top 25. Yeah, Top 17. Good job of putting some uh, teams on. Coming off a, a tremendous year a year ago, Tom, in the ACC, the appearances of bowl games and the fifth straight Orange Bowl title, the national champion. You know, Tom, did you think that, I thought Clemson, like, quietly is where they are. They, they didn't think there was a lot of notoriety for Florida State, and obviously a tough game with Alabama opening night. But Clemson's kind of flown under the radar a little bit, even though he's number three in the country. Well, they coming off the win against Auburn a week ago where they had 11 sacks, so... You talk about the new components offensively for Clemson. That defensive front, Dave, has got to be one of the best in all of the country. Bryant, Wilkins, Lawrence. We'll see those guys tonight against the Louisville Cardinals. That's to the 40, Jalen Samuels. It's kind of what Clemson did last year, Dave, really, with their early season victories. Samuels made the catch. There is a timeout on the field taken by NC State. We'll go back to Charlotte and get a preview of what's coming up at halftime. Thank you, Tom. We will be with you at halftime for ACC games in action. We're going to cover them all. Stan, what stood out for you so far? I'm going to go home. Charlottesville, Virginia, up 24-0, granted to a non-Power 5 team, but it looks so good. Uh, Pitt hasn't found the answer to giving up big plays. Down 49-7. Pat Narduzzi needs to find a white flag we somewhere. Looking, we were looking for that. White flag. We're also going to take a look back at this game. Stick around. Keep it here. The ACC Network Halftime Show coming up next. Stan riding around the studio on the, <laughs> with the saber drawn. I mean, <laughs> no, good, good for uh, Virginia. They need some good things to happen to them, and, and uh, it's good that they're playing and get them some confidence as we get ready to head into ACC play. We've got an ACC matchup for you next week for the ACC Game of the Week. With Georgia Tech hosting Pittsburgh, having its troubles at home against Oklahoma State, but the second straight top 10 opponent for the Pittsburgh Panthers and Pat Narduzzi. Hines is the back. 1.20 to go in our first half. Finley will give it to him. 30 yard line. And a first down to the 29. Naheem Hines and 11 yards and Orr making the tackle for Furman. Well, Furman trying to mix it up defensively. We've seen some pressure. This time they drop it back into a zone. And all they do is hand the football off to Hines with only five defenders in the box. Just nobody to, to really get after the run game. This is Hines. Going to be swallowed up there. Alec Hand, number 42 on the tackle. Three yards on the play. Clock continues to roll. We're inside of a minute to go in our first half, and there is a timeout taken. Here's our ACC standings. It's brought to you by Dish in the Atlantic Division. What a matchup tonight. Dave Archer, Louisville, and Clemson. And what happens in this side is NC State's laying in the weeds. It's been Louisville. It's been Clemson, it's been Florida State, and NC State kind of lay the weeds in Wake Forest. I think Dave Clawson would probably say, hey, what about us? They're off to a good start as well. Big win in conference against Boston College a week ago for Wake Forest. Coastal Division seemingly always up for grabs, but 
the inside track may be given to Miami. Duke has had a solid season so far. And Virginia Tech, another team, a little bit under the radar, Dave, they take on East Carolina today. He's got an excellent win against West Virginia to start the season. I think they're excited about where they're at, even though there are a number of star players have left to go to the National Football League. Virginia Tech, another team not being talked about very much. Miami trying to make its first trip to the ACC Championship game. This year contested in Charlotte, North Carolina. 13th edition of that title game. Here's Finley. Through the progression, completed to 20. That's Kelvin Harmon, first down, forging his way to the 11-yard line. Still and a lot of time here, Tom. Yeah, they marked him out, Dave, actually, at about the 13. He got 14 yards on the play. 50 seconds, clock stopped with the first down, so Finley doesn't have to be in a big hurry. Big throw to the outside. You see Harmon's run after catch there. Finley has, has a more than enough time here. Finley. Complete Lewis at the five and double teamed. And they wrestle with Lewis. A little bit more sense of urgency now as we get inside 30 seconds. Finley. First and 10 line presented by Cookout, serving fresh char grilled hamburgers and 40 fancy milkshakes. Finley. Harmon. Stop short. No second effort. No, they will rule him down at the one. Gonna need to get your time out now here. Yep. First storm. 20 seconds. Now the clock will stop at 21. Got the first down, so he may be able to save it. Harmon was ruled beyond the first down marker. Uh, you can hear the first storm yelling timeout. He wants the timeout. Very difficult to get guys lined up in the final 20, 25 seconds and not lose potentially an additional play. So I think good timeout for first storm. Reeves and Farrar had to combine to stop the momentum of Kelvin Harmon. Down to the sidelines and D.J. Shockley. Guys, you talked about the versatility of Jalen Samuels on that particular play. He lined up at tight end on that last play at block. So we've seen him at receiver, tailback, fullback, and now at tight end here near the goal line. His versatility is unmatched for sure. Yeah, and I think you get an additional, that would have been considered a quarterback snap, if I'm not mistaken, in the Wild Wolf where he scored. So maybe not even tailback. So you're right, Shock. He's all over the field. Um, you know, the, the argument here is, okay, if you kept the timeout, Tom, and were able to get up and maybe and maybe spike the ball because the first down, you have the timeout, you can run it. You'll be able to run the football. Here now, a run of some kind, especially if it's one of those pile scenarios where you're trying to get all the people in pile, might be tough to, to get lined up uh, then get another snap off. So pretty good job by Coach Dorn there. To, to serve himself uh, a t without a timeout now you're probably looking at two plays this will be the 11th play coming up on this drive they've gone 75 yards so far down to about the one yard line they do have a couple of short rushing TDs both from Jalen Samuels and the first from two yards out and earlier this quarter from a yard out for Samuels, as Dave mentioned, he took the direct snap and then went airborne into the end zone. And remember, Tom, last year, uh, Samuels was one for one for a one-yard touchdown throw. If he ends up in that, I'm not sure they would use it here. That might be a play they save for later, later on in the year, but certainly potentially in the offense. Samuels is the back. Overload look left here for NC State. Samuels. Cuts at the goal line and goes in. Jalen Samuels, third rushing touchdown of the day. This one from a yard out. Well, Samuels going to go left, and in this look at the screen, it's left for NC State. But as you look at it to the right side, they've overloaded the line again. He just kind of waited, waited, and found a little crease to step inside Elijah McCoy for the touchdown. And once again, another two-minute drive. You saw the, the graphic we put up. That's three times in a row in the two-minute drill. They scored touchdown. Extra point from Carson Wise. 18 seconds to go. 28-13. Jalen Samuels, the senior from Charlotte, North Carolina, giving Furman headaches in short yardage situations. Three times he has scored on a rushing TD from two yards out, a yard out, and just a moment ago also from one yard away. Dave, now 36 career touchdowns for Jalen Samuels, who does it in a variety of ways. Yeah, last year, look at his numbers last year, he had 55 catches, caught seven touchdown passes, but also ran the ball for six touchdowns. So you're not sure where he's going to be, and we've probably beaten that down as much as we can, but it's just 
it's incredible. You don't see that. You don't see a lot of play. You see players play a couple positions. This kid's everywhere. You could line this kid outside the numbers, and he might be the best receiver on the field uh, as an outside receiver. So I think Coach Dorn talked about yesterday Jalen Samuels, and he was mentioning it'll be interesting to see where the NFL places him. I even asked Coach Dorn yesterday, I said, what room does he go to to have his meetings? Is he in the running back room, the tight end room, the wide receiver room? He just runs the all of them. Now you got to add the quarterback room, yeah. I guess. So, yeah, just a fun kid to watch. And he and Matt Day shared the load here for three years. And now Matt Day's on to the National Football League in Cleveland. And so now Jalen Samuel's kind of that leader in the backfield. Yeah, Matt Days, who rushed for 1,166 yards. A season ago, the first NC State back since T.A. McClendon in 02 to go over 1,000 yards as Jake Walker made the fair catch for the Paladins. Matt Days was fun to watch running that football, but Jalen Samuels is a special player at many different positions. Coming up next Saturday on the ACC Game of the Week presented by Mellow Mushroom, Pittsburgh at Georgia Tech. Our coverage starts at noon with the ACC Blitz. The Panthers trailing 49-14 right now to Oklahoma State. Georgia Tech had its game at Central Florida this week canceled, so they will not play this weekend. They will get ready for Pittsburgh coming up next Saturday, and we will be there. Dave Archer, DJ Shockley, and myself. And it appears that the Paladins will run out the clock here in the second quarter. 28-13. One TD pass for Ryan Finley. His sixth of the season, and Jalen Samuels, three rushing touchdowns for the NC State Wolfpack to take the lead to the locker room at halftime here at Carter Finley Stadium on the ACC Network. What a first half for NC State, which scored on all but one possession in the first half. Down to DJ Shockley. All right, Coach. In the first half, your offense was really efficient. Three, four out of five drives scored a touchdown. Jalen Samuels, a huge part of that. How happy were you with the first half of your offense execution? It was good. I mean, we started fast on both sides of the ball. That was one of our goals today. Uh, disappointed we gave up the one big play there in the pass game, but they're giving us a lot of different things to have to go out there and stop. They're arcing tackles and flexing tackles out. It's triple option football, man. What's your message to your defense in the second half? Obviously that you weren't happy with how they finished, but what's your message coming into the second half? It's a new half. Just go out there and play one play at a time like we always do, 0-0. Zero, zero. It's all about putting our best team on the field. We're going to challenge them to do that for two more quarters. All right, Coach, have a good second half. A lot of things got to be coming up offensively. They did really well. You heard Coach say defensively, they have to do a better job with their eyes and also placement. Katie, back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, DJ. I, we were sitting here taking this one in, guys, and, and what I just mentioned to Stan was I'm surprised that this isn't a higher scoring game when it comes to the Wolfpack. Are you surprised? I could understand why you would feel that way given how well Ryan Finley has played and the level of competition, but I'm not. Coming into this game, when you look at what happened a year ago, 2016, Furman is at Michigan State, who was at the end number 12 in the country. They were in the game into the third quarter. They ended up losing by 15. The first two losses for Furman this season, one by one point to Wofford last week by a field goal to, uh, who did e they play Elon, last week? Elon, yeah, thank Elon. you. This is what they do. That 3-4 defense and that triple option, time of possession, they Slow ugly the game down. up. And maybe, you brought up a good point, just maybe NC State's looking ahead to Florida State next week. Tracking, we talked but, about it. Yeah, and you mentioned Ryan Finley. Mm -hmm. Coach Dorn's got to be impressed with him. 19 for 23, 194 yards, one touchdowns, no interception. I think you'll see a lot more of him in the second half. Yeah, Ryan spot. Finley, I'm sorry if I could. Ryan Finley, four more passes, and he passes Jacoby Brissett, second all-time in NC State passes without an interception. touchdown this one Jalen Samuels it was a two-yard run his first of three more highlights and second half adjustments next we've had our eyes glued on this one Ryan Finley another big game Stan what have you thought about this this guy's development is one of the best that we have in this conference 30-yard pass right there first catch of the year for the young Ramos right there so we see 28-13 at the half quickly. What is the second half adjustment? If you are Dave Doran in the locker room right now, what is the one thing that you're saying to your team? Uh, I think he's got to please with everything. The only thing he probably has got right now is giving up one big play on defense. He's five out of six on third down conversions. Right now they've been ultra successful with their possessions. I think scoring four out of five. Don't give up one big play defensively. Other than that, they've played really well. And that is one thing that he mentioned at the half to DJ Shockley. Stan, what have you thought? 
Wolves still eat meat? <laughs> they do. All right. I think so. Dave Dorn, go get you over there. Go to Harris Theater, grab you a pack of, of uh, ribeyes or something, and you dang that over Rosebud and Chubb. Your challenge to your team for the rest of this game should be no scores. I want to stay on this side of the 50. Let's put some good stuff on tape so that Florida State is that much more concerned. Time yeah, for the Wolves to come out. I might have lasted longer in coaching if I had learned that red meat theory. I never bought any, <laughs> I never bought any red meat at halftime. I wish I did. Huh? Yeah, nah. Where no. was Stan when I needed him? Guys, uh, over there trying to win some games. One thing that I want to mention real quick, and it was a thought we talked about coming into this game, was we've seen a whole lot of Ryan Finley through the air. They've got to be a balanced offense going into next week's game against Florida. State, are you satisfied with what you've seen on the ground? Because Jalen Samuels, all three carries, all three touchdowns. Yeah, but, but they still miss Matthew Days, and you just can't replicate that type of production. But I think they're doing as, as best as they can right now with Samuels as well as Himes. And you just continue that mix. And the offensive line has got to get better. They've got some new pieces back today that was suspended last week. Well, Ryan, Ryan of, yards come tough for Florida State. Absolutely. Speaking of Ryan Finley, he did it with this 30-yard pass to Jermichael Ramos. It was his first catch of the year. He did it well. We'll be back after a word from our local ACC station. Yeah. Geico presents the best of the ACC. Lamar Jackson, well, he's off to another hot start, Coach. Last year after two games, 10,015 yards. This year after two uh, games, 10,010 yards. Archie Griffith, running back at Ohio State, only two-time winner of the Heisman. Watch out. It might be a tough day for him, though, because he's going up against the Clemson D, including this guy, Austin Bryant. Listen, Austin Bryant last year, National Defensive Player of the Week. He was the number 15 Dean in the nation coming out of school. When you team him with Dexter Lawrence and those both uh, Carlos Wilkins in there, as well as Cleveland Farrell on the other end, best defensive line in the country. Leading the ACC with four sacks so far. That is our Geico best of the ACC. Well, don't forget, we've got a new post-game show called Victory Formation. You can find that at the ACC.com. Coach and Stan are going to break down everything you need to know about the game tonight. Louisville taking on Clemson. We are so excited about it. They've got some great points. Make sure to check it out. Third quarter action. When we come back, Tom, Dave, and DJ. Stick around, NC State and Furman. NC State and Furman renewing that rivalry for the first time in 32 years in an exciting and entertaining first half between the Pack and the Paladins. Tom Wormy, Dave Archer with you here at halftime Carter Finley Stadium. Jalen Samuels impressive in the first half, Dave. Three rushing touchdowns to tie a career high, but the Paladins aren't going away. 71 yard pass play keeps him in it in the first half. Yeah, and we talked about Jalen Samuels off the top. Uh, what does this guy do? Where's he going to line up? Well, pretty much what he said. He's all over the place, but when they've gotten on the goal line they've gone to a big package and they've let the big running back carry the football one in the even in the wild wolf formation but three touchdowns Tom for Jalen Samuels this is the third of those three touchdowns just short yardage power type situations but as you mentioned uh, on the defensive side of the ball NC State has been pretty good as well they've hemmed in the quarterback they've limited some of the big plays and certainly Bradley Chubb has been at the forefront of that but Furman did find a way to stay in the football game. Excellent play action fake by Blazowski. And he heads down the field to Shumper. Shumper, 71-yard touchdown. He close, he's closing in on 100 yards on the day. Let's go down with Coach Hendricks. Here's DJ Shockley. All right, Coach. First half, you went out. Your, your offense played really well. I thought your offense had some good moments. Put up 13 points. I was impressed with you with your offense being able to move the football the way they were. Well, we made a couple big plays, and we, we, we should have made a couple more. We got to be, be a little better just sustaining some drives and making a little tougher yards running the football. I know certainly it's a challenge there. And then we just got to find a way to get off the field on third down on defense, you know. And they've been out there a long time. We got one stop, and I knew it was going to be that way a little bit. We just got to keep playing. Jalen Samuels, a huge part of what they're doing offensively. He lines up all over the field. How do you account for where he lines up throughout the game for your defense? Well, it's tough just because they can run the football pretty well. You know, so it, it, that's certainly challenging defending them. You know, we just got to, like I said, we had a couple chances on third down and get off field, we did. We just, we just got to be able to do that. All right, Coach, have a good second half. As you can see, guys, Furman has a big second half coming. Offensively, big plays are be had. They're also looking forward to more defensive execution as well. Back to you guys, Tom and Arch. 
Dave, that's Hines who's going to keep it in the end zone on our kickoff for the second half. It is now time for our halftime stats. Dave, they're brought to you by Dish. Yeah, and when you look at it, Furman, they did a good job with the play we talked about, the throw to Shumper to stay in the football game. Got to do a better job on first and second down. They're averaging nine yards on third down to try to convert. They've done a decent job at three for seven, but that would help things uh, significantly for Furman if they want to continue to, to stay close. They've been they've had a tough time stopping in the Cincy State's offense. Need a couple of stops here in this second half. The NC State from its own 25. Ryan Finley, 19 of 23, 194 yards and a touchdown in the first half. That 30 yards to Ramos. That ball's on the turf as they try the gadget play. Gavin Lockner able to scoop it up and try to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Won't do it. He'll lose three. Well, just a, an exchange, a bad exchange between the running back. The last beat just kind of tossed it up to him, and obviously that's something they practice, whether you hand it off or toss it. Last he tossed the ball, it was a little bit off target on the back shoulder of Lockler, and he was lucky to get back on it. NC State trying to get fancy on its first possession of the second half. There's nothing fancy about the way they scored in the first half. Three short rushing TDs from Samuels. This is Finley on the carry for six yards. Now we take a look at the Wolfpack effort in the first half offensively. Four touchdowns and the one punt, Tom. How about you, Michael Ramos, Dave, who had that touchdown grab? He didn't play all of last year with a couple of knee surgeries. Yeah, and I think that was one of the guys that Coach Dorn was extremely excited about. Certainly a great moment for Ramos uh, catching a touchdown after those the moments, I'm sure those downtrodden moments when you're in a in a room trying to rehab from two knee surgeries. Five of six on third down for NC State. And that's Samuels reaching back to make the catch beyond the 45. Well, this is one of the adjustments it looked like Furman maybe tried to make was go man coverage. And what happens is Farrar draws Samuels in man coverage, and he just not able to stay with the 215-pound running back slash receiver slash quarterback. Uh, and a nice job of swimming to the inside, moving the defender out of the way, and getting back to the inside on that, that in route. Sixth catch of the game for Samuels. That one went for 18 yards. This is Hines. Bounces off a defender, but falls at midfield. Well, I think it was the umpire guy in the official, and, and we were on the field shocking him on the field. This guy is about six foot eight and about 300 pounds. You see how big he is in there, the big official. And he's the guy that made the initial hit on Hines to keep him from potentially breaking this thing out. So it's always good to deploy 13 players on the defensive side if you can. Our first and 10 line brought to you by Honda Dealers of the Carolinas. This year, don't settle for anything less than a Honda. Mark Shoup is the umpire. Who Dave credited with the tackle on the previous play. This is Naheem Hines for three yards. Now, Furman had potentially NC State in a perfect spot, had the tackle for loss on first down, a minimal game by Finley, and, of course, the catch by Samuels. He's been the, the bailout guy today so far for uh, NC State. Third and short. Trying to work the edge incomplete to Locklear. Now, Lockler hadn't had a good drive so far. Dropped a little toss from Gillespie on the reverse, and this one's going to hit him right in the face mask. Well-thrown ball hits him right in the face. He's a little upset with himself there. That had a chance to potentially have a big play, and that's going to force NC State to punt it. Just the second punt of the day for the Wolfpack. A.J. Cole out of the field. Thomas Gordon ready to receive the punt from Cole. Early moments of the second half here on the ACC Network. Fair catch at the 12. 36 yards on the punt. Four and a half seconds on the hang time from Cole. Back to Raleigh in just a moment. ACC football is brought to you by Food Lion. Raising standards without raising prices. How refreshing. By your Carolina Ford dealers. By Geico, saving people money for over 75 years. By Mattress Firm. And by Bojangles. It's Bowtie. Parents weekend activities here in Raleigh, North Carolina on the NC State campus. How about that hit in the bumper ball soccer game, Dave, that we showed you there? They don't play on parents' weekend, man. <laughs> All kinds of hijinks going on. 
We've got your ACC Network Game of the Week right here. Furman and NC State is Antonio Wilcox, the senior, has the carry for the Paladins as we review their first half drives. Yeah, they've moved the ball sometime, and so Coach Hendricks has to be happy about that. If it gets his defense pretty good. Uh, they got the two field goals and, of course, the long touchdown. So I think they've, I, think, I would say, grind and scrappy effort so far by a young, really young Furman team. Andy Shumpert, the tight end, had that long touchdown catch of 71 yards in the second quarter from P.J. Blazjowski, his second TD toss of the season. Now he wants to throw it again. A little bit behind a twisting receiver, Thomas Gordon. This was a play they wanted right here, Tom. Excellent ball handling, and they, this is their big timer. Thomas Gordon acts like he's going to the flat, completely fools Jared Fernandez, the linebacker, and if that ball's on target, it's a touchdown. Big time speed, Thomas Gordon, he's their big playmaker. He's averaged 30 yards of reception so far this year, and that was the shot they were looking for. Boy, just can't miss those. Third and six for the Paladins. Quick trigger, 20-yard line. Caught Logan McCarter up to the 22-yard line, and that is going to be really close to a first down, and it will be granted to the Furman Paladins. What a good effort by McCarter to get the first down here. It's a slant route, and NC State's got it defended, but look at the second effort by McCarter to get the first down. Excellent job of extending the football and his body as well to just break the plane of the 22. Take some guts, Dave, from McCarter because you know after you catch that football, you're going to have some red shirts all over you. Yeah, he, he really did a nice job of realizing where he was on the field and getting to the sticks. He'll toss it out. Darius Moorhead trying to get to the 30 before he is wrapped up. Sean Boone, number 24, had the tackle. Eight yards for Moorhead. Thomas Gordon, number 89, on the right side of your screen. Watch him seal the edge right there. Just a little hand on the side of Contavious Street allows Moorhead to get to the perimeter. Nice job by, by Gordon. Gordon's not a big guy either, Tom. Only weighs about 180 pounds. Did a nice job of blocking enough of Street on that outside shoulder to get Moorhead to the edge. Moorhead, the redshirt freshman, missed most of last season with a concussion. Now they'll try Tristan Luke for a yard. Now Luke, Dave, was the running back who scored a 44-yard touchdown with 46 seconds left in that game in the first week against Wofford. They just couldn't get the two-point conversion or the onside kick and lost to Wofford in that first week. That is Luke, who is down on the turf. Junior from Clarksville, Tennessee. Well, he's had, uh, he's made a couple plays in this game. We'll step aside for just a moment. You're watching the ACC Game of the Week. Back to the live action on third and one for Antonio Wilcox. He should have enough for the first down, got two. And that'll move the sticks for the Furman Paladins. What helped them there, Tom, is they, we talked about this a couple of times, certainly was our key to the game for Furman to stay on schedule. So the eight yard run on first down has allowed them to stay in their mode of where they can keep the fullback involved. And two back-to-back -back runs by the guy up in the middle there, Wilcox for the first down. Blaze Jasky airs it out, knocked away, and ball to the turf. Thomas Gordon, the intended receiver, Nick McLeod, stride for stride. Well, Tom, I think NC State gets away with a grab on the shoulder. They put Gordon out wide. He's the big play guy. Let's see if McLeod grabs the shoulder pad. He did. Grabs onto the jersey. Not sure how that's not seen. He's impeding the receiver to get to his spot, which is the definition of pass interference right here. And then eventually Gordon becomes the defender. This ball is almost intercepted on the tip. And Gordon prevents it from happening. But I thought that uh, NC State got away with interference there. Blazjowski has not thrown the interception this season. Wow, an aggressive attack by the front four. Your DJ talking about how NC State was kind of catching up front, meaning they were kind of staying in their spot. This time, DJ, it looks like Hill came downhill. Looks like Street was coming downhill on this one. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's because of what Jalen Samuel said to him during that brief break. He went to the offense and said, hey, we're scoring 40 points a game. Then he went over to the defense and said, be ready for a four-quarter battle. So maybe they took heat of that and it's coming off the football right now to stop Furman. 
Five of nine on third down with the Paladins. Blaze Jasky rolls the pocket, throws on the run, incomplete. Up near midfield. Yeah, too much pressure for Blaze Jasky to kind of get his feet on and get the shoulders headed downfield. And that's exactly what DJ was just talking about. Maybe Jalen Samuels and his leadership just immediately BJ Hill runs through. Now Blaze Jasky's on the dead run. That's hard to make a throw when you're running dead away and try to be accurate. Hines will wait for the punt from J.C. Hollingsworth. Got it. Deflected and bouncing around there in midfield. Looked like Steph Lewis. Might have got a piece. So the punt only goes 16 yards after being deflected. Take a look and see which which member of the Wolf Pack gets his hand on it. They came with some pressure. Jamaica Ramos is right through the middle and then unblocked off the edge, as, as you called it, Tom. Steph Lewis, starting wide receiver, gets a hand on the football and gives the Wolf Pack a short field opportunity. And you know, some of the best special teams are when you go ahead and put some of your better players on those special teams. That's a senior wide receiver. Or I'm sorry, a junior Richard, junior wide receiver Steph Lewis that makes that block. Dave, I'd imagine you have to be pretty confident that you're going to get a piece of that football if you're going to be that aggressive because he certainly ran into the kicker after the play. This is Samuels. It's going to be a short game into Paladin territory. And speaking of Samuels, here's our cookout. Fast fact, Dave Archer. 152 receptions, third most in history. He had 55 a year ago. Just the, uh, I know we've sung his praises, but when you've got a guy that's as multifaceted as this kid, pretty cool to watch a guy operate and a guy that's going to be playing at the next level in a lot of places as well. Finley. Harmon. And to the 41-yard line, Kelvin Harmon. Set a freshman school record last year, Dave, with five touchdown catches. Big quick throw. It's hard on those, Tom, because a lot of times you don't get the threads. As a quarterback, you like to have those threads to be able to, you know, the, the seams on the ball where you can put the put your hands on those, le those leather threads. On so those type of throws, you just catch the football and try to put it in your palm and let it go. Over the middle. Complete. It's Lewis to the near side. He's the guy who made the block on the punt attempt by Furman. He goes 14 yards on the grab for Lewis. Now Lewis in the slot, gets underneath the defender that's in that area, and then this is just run after the catch. Does an excellent job. Really doesn't get a key block on his run. Lewis does a good job with the ball in his hands. What was that puzzled look you gave me when I said threads, Tom, with the court? I thought you were talking about your clothes, yeah, you never, your threads, yeah. like, you know, from back in the 70s That or would something. make sense, because you carry all your clothes in the stadium in a bag. <laughs> Over the right side, it's Hines to the end zone for the Wolfpack. Now, Naheem Hines has track speed. He's a sprinter. We talked about his ability in open field with kickoff return. Here's... Here's something he's really improved at. Find the crease, one foot in the ground, boom, I'm gone. Excellent job by Naheem Hines. This is a stretch play. You're just looking for a crease, and when you see it, put one foot in the ground and go north and south. And when that kid, I, said, I mentioned it earlier, Tom, in the game, if that kid finds a crease, it's over. You can go ahead and head to the house. 28 yards on a run by Hines, the junior from Garner, North Carolina. Naheem Hines with his second rushing touchdown of the season, and we'll be back after a word from your local ACC station. ACC football is brought to you in part by Dish. We'll look at newly refurbished Reynolds Coliseum. Statues, Jimmy Valvano. Reynolds, the former home of the basketball program, they now play at PNC Arena, which is right across the concourse off to our left. Yeah, you listen Carter real, Family Stadium. If you listen real close, Wittenberg is just short with the <laughs> Lorenzo oh. Charles jams at home. How about those, that crowd? There's your scoring drive. What a moment. Quick scoring drive, short field opportunity by the Steph Lewis block punt, and didn't take long for NC State to shove it in the end zone. 11 carries, 92 yards of the game for Hines. 
That's going to be Wynn who stays in the end zone. There is a penalty marker way behind the play. All right, watch this offensive line come off. It's zone blocking. Everybody coming this way, but the key block is right here that's going to make it from a five-yard play to a touchdown. Right there, the block that frees Hines, and the accelerator is stepped on, and he's in the end zone. But excellent job of everybody coming off together to the right. Fullback steps through and gets the key block. First down. So the penalty was against the kicking team, which would be NC State. So a five-yard penalty marked off, and the ball's at the 30. Naheem Hines, sure. again, 11 carries, Dave, 92 yards. I'm not sure I'd do this. Would you, Tom, in this situation, take the five-yard penalty? Did they have an opportunity to re-kick it, or did they just have the five-yard opportunity? I, was, I didn't see that, but I think you could tee Gordon up another uh, on a kickoff return. You'd like to do it. Good option. They've elected to accept the penalty from the 30-yard line, first and 10. Plays Jowski with the football just beyond the 30, maybe a yard. In the option game, this is called the follow play. You fake to the fullback, and then the quarterback just steps in behind. But NC State, you had kind of ramped it up. Your DJ talking about they ramped it up up front. And they certainly have. They've minimized the interior part of the run game. Our first and 10 line brought to you by your Honda dealers of the Carolinas. This year, don't settle for less than a Honda. Plays Jowski, finds his man at the 35, and it's Jake Walker, number 80. That's going to be enough to move those chains, get a first down and 10 yards as Tim Kid Glass was defender. Good decision by Blaze Jowski. He had Gordon at the second level in behind. Watch number 89. He potentially wanted to throw in the ball. Saw that NC State had sunk in coverage, so he drops the ball off underneath. Excellent decision by Blaze Jowski. He's just been inaccurate a couple times, namely the one to Gordon here in the early in the second half, but he's played pretty well. run for Furman by Wilcox State. This Furman program not afraid to play the big teams from around the nation since 1982. They're 6, 27, and 1 against FBS opponents. And they have a win recently. In 2015, they went to Central Florida and beat Central Florida 16-15. And we told you the history of this rivalry back in 84 and 85 beat NC State right here. Those were teams that contended for national championships at what was then the 1AA level for the Furman Paladins. Yeah, they've uh, and obviously their head coach is a guy that was part of those teams. Boy, I'm a little surprised that Wilcox ran right by the block that would have freed Moorhead up for a big game right there. He just didn't see the flow coming from inside out. Had he gotten a block there, I think Moorhead has the sideline, a potential big play. Third and six. 50% on third down for the Paladins from the 45. Blaze Jowski has the time in that pocket. The pass completed. Shumpert, and he's got a first down at the 46-yard line. How valuable has that young man been today? He's been spectacular. Just one catch prior to today, but uh, he and his quarterback have been on the same page. Good read here by Shumpert to set it down in the zone in between the two backers. Does an excellent job of getting the first down. Shumpert reading coverage extremely well. Let's take a look at protection. We talked about how vicious this front four is. They provide enough time for Blaze Jowski to make a good throw to his tight end. First and ten Paladins. Toss it out to Moorhead. He's going to be stopped for a loss. Darian Roseborough. Loss of three for Furman. Very unsung guy is Darius Roseborough. Talked about him, included him in our in our food line impact players. You know, there's a lot of guys on this defensive front. This is a guy that comes in and just makes plays in the backfield. 11 tackles behind the line of scrimmage a year ago. He already has two today. He had seven sacks to go along with that performance a year ago. So he's a guy that kind of gets lost in the shuffle potentially with Contavious Street and and Bradley Chubb, but Roseboro could play. Four minutes to go in the third quarter. That pass is available and taken by NC State. Sean Boone racing to the goal line and in for the touchdown. This talked about Darius Roseboro in his disruptive he is. He gets in the face. 
of Blazjowski, so Blazjowski doesn't get a chance to sort out what's happening downfield. Probably wouldn't have thrown this had he see, had not had the defender in his face, and then Boone, who's right on the coverage, exactly where he's supposed to be, does exactly what he's taught to do when he sees screen, closes from that nickelback position, and races to the end zone. First interception of the season for Sean Boone, and he returns it 47 yards for the touchdown for NC State. Also the first pick of the year thrown by Blaze Jowski, and the Wolfpack takes it all the way to the end zone. This is a part of the NC State game. They've got tremendous athletes on the defensive side, just haven't taken it away as much as they would like. And they've done it today. They got the interception for a touchdown. That's already, what, four takeaways, Tom, on the year? Uh, had 16 all of last year. So trying to step that part of their game up. But you love the fact that when you got competition on the D line and in second, those guys come in playing at such a high level, they went out and do the other guy. And so that's that's where they're at NC State depth-wise, where a guy like Roseboro comes in with his opportunity, he makes two plays. Let's take a look at our matchup to watch, courtesy of your Honda dealers of the Carolinas, and it's number three against number 14 tonight in Louisville, Kentucky. I like that average per game for the Heisman Trophy winner from a year ago, 505 <laughs> yards. And I've been asked a number of times doing radio shows around the country and all this kind of stuff about the play in the ACC. The big question is, can Lamar Jackson repeat his performance? You'd say, well, probably not, maybe, because it was a Heisman Trophy for him. How do you get better than that? Well, he's trying to prove it to us in a big game tonight against Clemson. He accounted for six touchdowns in a win against North Carolina last week. The Cardinals and the Tigers played an outstanding game a season ago, also won by the Tigers. And for more on NC State's defensive effort today, here's DJ Shockley. About it. You talked about Dave Huxable and what he's done for his defense, and we got a chance to sit down with him yesterday. And Tom, you asked him point blank, what do you want to see different from your team? And he said, I want the turnover margin to be in our favor. And they're doing that today. They're flying around. I think the difference has been up front, like Arch talked about. They're getting more pressure on Blake Jowski. And on the back end, they're reaping the benefits of it. Once they get the pressure on them as a big play there, we saw with the interception for six. Yeah, shocking. It's a it's a young secondary group. They're really banged up back there. And, and of course, Sean Boone's kind of that swing guy. They play a 4-2-5, and so he's that fifth defensive back and kind of a pseudo linebacker, but good read on the screen there to push it in the end zone. Coach Huxtable, the D coordinator here, he was a GA, his first job when I was a junior at Iowa State. So I've known Hux a long time. Excellent coach. 36 years in collegiate coaching for well, Coach Dave Huxtable. And his defense responds on that play as Thomas Gordon has nowhere to go. Bradley Chubb, number nine, and a loss of three. Excellent job on the perimeter that time by this defense. Assignment-oriented football. You've got this interior, you've got the edge of the quarterback, and you've got the pitch guy. And that was done to a T by NC State right there. Second and 13 for Furman. The all-time winningest program out of the Southern Conference. It started back in 1921. In fact, most of the teams you see play collegiate football in the Southeast Day made their way through the Southern Conference. And you and I have had the great pleasure of doing that conference. We've had games. We, we actually kind of cut our teeth a little bit doing the Southern Conference. I had the great fortune to, to follow those teams. Wofford, back when it was Wofford at Georgia Southern and App State and Furman. Some really good football. Some of the best in the FCS level. Third and 13 for the Paladins. From the 22-yard line. As we play late in the third quarter, Blazjowski. Three players tried to converge on him. They finally get him. Did the ball come out at the end of the play? NC State thinks it did. The officials are going to agree. Now, two officials closest to us, Dave. And now three of them are saying, yes, it is NC State football. Just relentless pressure by NC State up front. Might have gotten a couple linebackers involved, too. Chubb at the bottom of your screen comes off. Good pressure from the inside by Hill. Now you get, looks like, Street holding back to the inside, and then the ball's jarred out. You can tell if Arius Moore came up to football, the linebacker. 
looks like David might have been Street who made the initial hit on Blaze Jowski. Yeah, he might have gotten the strip as yep. well. 35, Contavious Street, senior from Greenville, North Carolina, which is where the uh, Furman campus is in Greenville, South Carolina. And checking on this play upstairs to confirm that it is a fumble. And saw Coach Hendricks. He talked to us on the phone this week and talked about how we just can't make mistakes, can't give them short field opportunities. And Coach Dorn, as J.J. Shockley just told us, excited that they're creating some turn. Ball loose well before the knee's down. Contagious Street, as you said, Tom, got the rake. Not sure who came up with the recovery. Did you see a... Well, we thought it might have been Street, Dave, but I don't think he got okay. the recovery. I think maybe more. Darius Moore might have been involved in it. Joe Ryder is our replay official. After review, they're moving on the field from Fur. First down, NC State. The official word from Trey Blake, NC State football. So that is consecutive turnovers on the last two drives by Furman. The interception returned by Boone, 47 yards for the touchdown, and the strip by Contavia Street to give Dave Dorn's team the football back deep in Furman territory. Hey, uh, Tom, this is an area, and Shock and I both play quarterback. These are where offensive coordinators, Shock, like to take a shot right after a turnover. Yeah, this is the most important time here. Right after a turnover, defense is kind of on his heels. You're excited. Take a shot to the end zone. I wouldn't be surprised if they do it right now. Four rushing touchdowns in the game for NC State. One TD pass for Ryan Finley. Came in the first quarter, 30 yards to Ramos. Nichols. Leaping for the 10-yard line. First down for Nichols. How about that effort at the tail end of the play by DeQuay Nichols and 14 yards. And I guess that would be considered a shot when you when you can run for 14 yards. Controlling the line of scrimmage is NC State right now. DeQuay Nichols with a big run to the perimeter. And right now, NC State, NC State having their way up front. Brown game. Right side. Nichols. Into the end zone for the touchdown. NC State will pack from nine yards away. Well, we talked about how NC State is controlling the front, and you see players just coming off in the hat, in the driving Furman back off the ball. And then it got a little push there in the back end. Garrett Bradbury, the center. Does the now famous Bush push, if you will, the uh, Reggie Bush push against Notre Dame for the touchdown. Excellent job by NC State up front. That's really a, a, an offensive line touchdown. Five rushing TDs now, 147 yards in total on the ground for NC State. So three rushing TDs from Samuels, one from Naheem Hines, and one from DeQuay Nichols. Time to go back to Charlotte, North Carolina, in our ACC Network studios with Katie Whittle. Hey, thanks, Tom. Let's head to Wallace Wade, where Duke adds to their lead, Coach. Just a simple dive play, but when you can make one miss, Sean Wilson, 65 yards, 21-7. to seven. For the Blue Devils. That's at the time. Since then, Baylor has added a score. Duke with the lead, 21-14. Tom, Dave, back to you guys. Wow, Duke uh, looks very impressive offensively. Tremendous performance by Daniel Jones last week, and that Duke offense putting points on the board again. That looks like that might be a battle that goes to the wire as Baylor's got the score as well. Duke will face its rival, North Carolina, next week, Dave, as they meet. Earliest time they've yes, ever met right. in, a, in a schedule. Yeah, yeah. They have to travel to Chapel Hill, which is not all that far, but they take on the Tar Heels. It's only eight miles, but they've got some work to do against Baylor this afternoon. Shaping up to be a very exciting season in the Atlantic Coast Conference once again this year. It's always a scrap to see who comes out on top of the Coastal Division. Win remains in the end zone. Let's look at NC State's defense today, and they've been formidable. We talked about how nasty they are up front, and it's a rotation of about seven or eight players. Roseboro there, guy that comes off of the bench, forced the quick early throw that resulted in an interception by Boone for a touchdown, and here's the, the relentless rush. Contavious Street forces the ball out. And another short field opportunity. Two runs later, NC State puts another score on the board. So we talked about how nasty they are in the front seven. The entire defense has played at a high level. 
Two turnovers, seven tackles for loss. Both those it? turnovers, Dave, resulting in points as well. And in, it, a lot of times it's Ohio State and Clemson get mentioned as the top seven, top five or four up front. Uh, I think that NC State could be thrown in as one of the best in the country as well. It's going to be Keelan Dirks on the run for the Paladins. He got three. Fans, picture yourself at the 2017 Dr. Pepper ACC Football Championship. Mellow Mushroom giving you the opportunity to be there. Visit mellowmushroom.com slash ACC to enter for your chance to win the Mellow Mushroom VIP sweepstakes. We're back in Charlotte, North Carolina, December 2nd. Bank of America Stadium with the Clemson Tigers as the two-time defending champs. And that might be, uh, I don't think I'm going on too big short of a limb here, is that that might be the most exciting championship game in college football, the ACC championship. Great game against Virginia Tech last year. Yeah, don't forget North Carolina taking Clemson to the wire. They did. Georgia Tech is in, in Florida State the year they won the national championship at Florida State. I mean, you can't find a better championship game than the ACC championship. You can't find a better postgame show either, Dave. Immediately following today's game, studio crew Katie, Tommy, and Stan live. The ACC.com bring you our post game show victory formation. It's brand new. Check it out on the ACC.com. Third and one. Going to be a first down now for Furman. Waning seconds of the third quarter. 49 13. Now well, Furman's got to stay in their game plan. This is not a you know high powered throw the football offense. They try to run it at you, wear you down mentally and physically, and then take a shot. So it's not really conducive to coming back from 49-13, but they're working on their game so they get ready for the Southern Conference and do some damage in that. Yeah, Conference, they've won 13 times the best of any program. Wide open is Thomas Gordon trying to run away from his defenders, and he's tripped up at the 25. Now Gordon's been clean a couple of times, and this is the first time Blazowski's been able to get him the ball. But again, it's a broken assignment in the secondary, trying to defend the run. Eyes in the in the in the secondary and at the second level linebacker get drawn in by the run look, and Gordon slips behind him. You can see how explosive he is once he gets the football. Can really run an excellent tackle, really an open field to keep him from scoring. 41 yards on the catch and run for Thomas Gordon. That is the final play of the third quarter. We're on to the fourth. NC State and Furman. 15 minutes to go. 49-13. The Wolfpack on top of the Paladins. Our third quarter stats are brought to you by GlaxoSmithKline. Uh, four for four in the red zone for NC State, and then 14 points off of turnovers tell the story. NC State has been reluctant to give up yardage, and uh, when they've moved the football offensively, they've scored. Outscoring the Paladins 21-0 in that third quarter. Furman football and a sack of Blazjowski. Darian Roseboro topples the pile and a loss of two. Food line impact player. We talked about to start the game. Darian Roseboro kind of lost in the shuffle with all these defensive linemen, but this guy has a knack for making plays in the backfield and getting to the quarterback. Excellent job of pressuring the quarterback right there. Lost eight, second sack, Roseboro at the 32-yard line of NC State. Dirks just inside the 30 with a three-yard gain. A really good, jo good job of avoiding a head-on collision. NC State had a defender close it for the linebackers. And just a step around by Burst to maybe keep his neck from being short. So Furman with NC State on the schedule this year. Next year, they're going to travel to Clemson. Take on the Tigers. They'll play September 1st. Not as long as trip for him on that one. That's going to be an <laughs> exactly. Do you stay at home for that one? It's a local rivalry down that way in South Carolina. Wow, Jermaine Pratt here does an excellent job of stepping up and really maybe kind of decoying the he Pratt's eight at number three. He steps up to help defend against the play action. And then with the, this is a former defensive back now. They moved him 6'3", 235 pounds now. It was a big safety. See the 
You can see the, the DB skills there. You know, most DBs are frustrated receivers because they can't catch the ball. But uh, and that five certainly Dave, followed through there. For Dave you. Archer said that. 46-yard <laughs> field goal attempt. Grayson Atkins. He is putting on a clinic. It's his second 46-yarder to go along with a 34-yard field goal. Atkins three for three on the afternoon. 49-16, NC State in front of Furman. ACC football is brought to you by Geico, saving people money for over 75 years. By your local Chevy dealers. By Haviland Motor Oil, official motor oil of the ACC. Keep going. By Dish. And by Mellow Mushroom, out of this world pizza. The NC State Athletic Walk of Fame and History inside newly refurbished Reynolds Coliseum. Saw some of the great names in the history of NC State football. Bill Cower, Roman Gabriel, Philip Rivers, his helmet on display. Russell Wilson artifacts also in there from his days here at NC State. Trowell on the return up near the 30-yard line. 25 yards on the return as we go down to the sidelines. We check in with DJ Shock. Guys, you just mentioned quarterbacks and familiar ones here. A lot of people consider NC State to be QBU because they have four guys right now that are playing in the National Football League more than anybody else in the entire country. Obviously, Russell Wilson in Seattle. Mike Glennon, who started for the Bears. Russell, Russell Wilson, Phillip Rivers, obviously, and then Jacoby Brissett, who will get a start this week for the Indianapolis Colts. So four guys, what they call QBU here at NC State. And don't be surprised if Finley gets his opportunity next year's shot to be a part of that in the quarterback club in the National Football League. Jalen McClendon is committed quarterback for NC State, Dave. Down the sideline, McClendon into Paladin territory. That's a fine how do you do from number two as he's brought down by Porter. Porter drug him down by the seat of his pants here. This is the thing that McClendon probably does better than, certainly does better than Finley, but is his strength, is his ability to run. It's the quarterback counter play right there, run all the way for McClendon. Junior from Charlotte, North Carolina, went 29 yards on that previous play. Career long run for McClendon. Gillespie, flag is out. Penalty marker on the field after a two-yard gain by Gillespie. Holding, offense number 66, 10-yard penalty, second down. Our first and ten line is brought to you by your Honda dealers of the Carolinas as they first step off the penalty. This year, don't settle for anything less than a Honda. This has been a pretty mistake-free day by NC State. I look at Freddie Kiger, our expert in what's going on from a statistical standpoint. Three flags for NC State today. That's a pretty clean day. You saw that first and ten line again brought to you by your Honda dealers of the Carolinas. Gillespie. It's a pretty deep football team, Tom, for NC State now. And obviously, I don't want to jinx that for him because Dave Dorn's had those years where he wasn't sure who he was going to play. But right now, obviously, it's early in the year. Coach Dorn's got a talented football team. And they are, they've got to play the Florida States and Clemsons and, and Louisville's of the, of the ACC. And so you better have it locked and loaded. Those three teams get ready to play NC State this year. Coach Doran and taking this program to a bowl game the last three seasons as that sales incomplete. Don't forget, Katie, Tommy, and Stan live on the ACC.com bringing you our new postgame show, Victory Formation. They will certainly talk about the effort of NC State today and what will be a winning effort. Currently leading 49-16, 11.50 to go in our fourth quarter. Jalen Samuels, three rushing touchdowns. Even was in there as a tight end, as DJ noticed on one play, just for some blocking assignments, and did his job to perfection as usual. Seven of 14, seven of nine for NC State on third down. Why not McClendon? That ball pops out at the end. It appeared it was whistled dead. 
They are spotting the football at the 35 yard line which is short of the first down. Yeah there's not a lot in the playbook for third 15 or 16 yards and so why not with an uh, excellent athlete in McClendon build a little wall war for him with some line out front and see if the the big quarterback at six foot five 220 can try to get there for a first down. And now on fourth down we're going to leave McClendon out there and see what this offense can do. Seventh time that NC State has gone for it on fourth down this season. They have made it on three previous occasions. Maybe testing out some of the playbook options for a fourth down later on in the season. There appeared to be some disruption along that offensive line and penalty markers support that assessment. Trey Blake has the official word. Ball start, 14, offense, number 66, five-yard penalty, fourth down. Looked like it was just a delay snap, but the freshman, uh, Fed Jackson, was the guy that got called for the penalty, but they they slid Sculthorpe over to center and pulled Bradley, I'm sorry, Garrett Bradbury out of the game, so a little bit different snap cadence, potentially, and then a new center didn't handle the snap and cadence correctly, and now NC State left the punt the football. Ryan Finley's day complete. Did have a touchdown pass in this game to Jermichael Ramos of 30 yards in the first quarter. They will mark that punt up at the 12 yard line. 28 yards on the punt. Here's a look at our Toyota game summary for summaries of other ACC games. Visit the Toyota Game Center on the ACC.com. Well, Samuels and Hines have been outstanding. Career high for, for Hines, 92 yards rushing in the touchdown. Of course, Jalen Samuels, career high, three touching touchdowns rushing. Uh, but those two guys, looks like Matt Day's not forgotten. <laughs> Certainly still beloved here at NC. But Naheem Hines ready to step in and be that guy that's going to go along with Jalen Samuels. Uh, for uh, NC State. The other day, Samuels, five carries in the game. Three times he scored from short yardage. That's Keelan Dirks. First down run. Harris Roberts has also come in, the backup quarterback for the Furman Paladins. He wears number 15. Really the first time today that we've seen that fullback get any kind of yardage through the middle. NC State has completely bottled up the first part of that option. So Roberts in for Blaze Jowski. Devin Wynn on the carry. A good block on the perimeter there by Ryan DeLuca. Freshman tight end slash receiver. Got a really good, good block on the perimeter to free up that run. Number of the the second team guys are stepping in for both NC State and for Furman. But uh, all want to impress and potentially push the guy in front of them on the depth chart to get on the field. First and ten line, Dave, brought to you by your Honda dealers of the Carolinas. This year, don't settle for less than a Honda. Dirks again on the carry, short yardage. We talked about some of the great players and quarterbacks specifically in the history of NC State, Dave. One of the great players to come out of Furman, Sam White, who played quarterback for the Paladins, went on to... Great heights in the NFL as the head coach of the Bengals and took them to the Super Bowl against Joe Montana and the 49ers. But Sam has returned to television. He is calling some of the Furman games this year, some of the home games at Paladin Stadium. Recipient of a recent heart transplant and back to great health, and we wish him nothing but the best. When you're talking, Dave, about how we both kind of came up through the Southern Conference calling football games, I got to work with Sam White right next to me, and it was a complete honor and thrill to work with him. Yeah, quality guy. I had a chance to sit down and talk to Sam a couple of times. And just a, a guy that wants to hear what you have to say as much as he wants to talk what he's going to talk about. You know, you, a lot of times you know these storytellers, they just want to talk themselves, you know, but he really, he's asking questions. He's just a just a quality individual. I'm glad you said that because Sam, it's cool that, that Sam's doing well and, and good to have him back in football. Time out. North Carolina State. The first short time out of the half. NC State with the timeout. 8-16 to go in our game. The 17th all-time meeting between these two programs, but the first in 32 years. And 
Most of the day has belonged to Dave Dorn and the NC State Wolfpack. What do they have coming up, Dave? How about next Saturday? Have to travel to Tallahassee to play a game at noon. And that was a close game last year right here in Raleigh, 24-20, and a loss to Dave Dorn's team, which lost a lot of close games last year, and that includes this year, too, in their first game against South Carolina. Previous play is under review. I'm trying to check the spot. They're looking for the spot. These are always tough when you run it into the interior of the offensive and defensive line as to where the ball should be spotted. And did it come out? And was he laying on a defender? A lot to evaluate there because the ball falls right in to the lap of an NC State defender. Let's see if he lands on top. Is that Roseboro again? Yeah, it looks like he's laying on Roseboro's arm and it falls right into his lap. This would be a good angle here. Burks the runner as he touched the ground. I don't know if there's anything definitive, Tom, that gives you an idea that it's called. You must have indisputable video evidence, Dave. Fourth down. Okay, they saw it. NC State is out of charge. And also charged their first time out of the half. Okay, they saw enough there to confirm that Birch was not on the ground, but it, who made another play? NC State Roseboro. Does another nice job of being involved in the backfield to make a play. Nine tackles, two of those for loss, I think, or three of those for loss, and two sacks, I believe, in the game for Roseboro. Got to imagine Dave Huxtable will be pleased with this effort against Furman this afternoon for the most part, Dave. Yeah, and there's the, there's the other guy, Bradley Chubb, we talked about at the beginning of the game, a guy that now has the NFL's eye as maybe one of the first 32 picks of the draft in that first round. All-conference selection a year ago. 18 career sacks for Chubb. How about that effort to keep Furman from getting the first down? Contavious streak, Dave. It's just a, it's a tough task now to handle this front four. NC State going to get it back as they tackle Harris Roberts on fourth down. You're watching the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. Tickets to the 2017 Dr. Pepper ACC Championship on sale now. Purchase a four-pack, receive $20 in Bojangles gift cards and four ACC hats. Reserve your four-pack today. Also be sure to tag your game day photos this season with hashtag ACC fans for a chance to be featured in an ACC commercial. The ACC Championship game, December 2nd, Charlotte, North Carolina. Dequay Nichols on the run for eight yards. The Wolfpack will improve to 2-1 and one this season. 2-0 and oh at home. They beat Marshall last week here at 37-20. First and 10 line brought to you by your Honda dealers of the Carolinas. This year, don't settle for less than a Honda. Over 200 yards rushing in the game for the NC State Wolfpack attack on the ground, and that should be enough for a first down just inside the 30. Tom, let's take a look what NC State has coming up. Uh, Florida State, you mentioned on the road in Tallahassee, and then, of course, a team you're mildly familiar with, the <laughs> Syracuse Orange come here, and then Louisville. They, so that's not, not an easy task. Again, you know, kind of chuckle a little bit about Syracuse. Uh, that's a team that's really hard to prepare for because they throw it all over the yard, sandwich in between Louisville and Florida State. NC State went to the Dome last year and won at Syracuse. Lost a one-sided game to Louisville and lost a close one to Florida State as we go to our Charlotte studio. Let's head to Charlottesville where it's a final now, Virginia Who's all over the Husky stand. Who's win largely because my boy Kurt Banker doing what he does, dropping a dime on my other boy Andre Levron at busted coverage. We don't care. Get your name in the paper. Oh, they don't do that anymore. Get on Snapchat, Dre. You're a star. You mentioned Kirk Banker, 455 yards through the air, three touchdowns. Again, Virginia on top of the Who's, 38-18. Katie, thank you. Here it's 49-16, just over seven minutes to go in our fourth period. 
was a personal foul against NC State. So that has moved the football all the way back to the 38-yard line. The first down markers at the 20. McClendon, patience. Over the middle, complete. Nichols. Boy, how shifty is Nichols? And a number of players miss on that. A good decision by McClendon. Deep zone coverage by Furman. Good smart decision by McClendon to lay the ball off, and then he got it to him quick enough where Nichols became a bit of a threat there with the ball in his hands. Jalen McClendon coming in for Ryan Finley, who threw a touchdown pass today. 231 yards in total passing for Ryan Finley. And 22 of 27. McClendon stepping up. Near the 21, Emizi for eight yards. And we talked about what a great job Dave Dorn has done recruiting here. Emeka Emizi is a freshman receiver from Raxaw, North Carolina, Marvin Ridge High School. As a senior, caught 99 balls for just under 1,400 yards and 18 touchdowns. He can't get on the field enough because of the guys they've got in front of him. What a great job Coach Dorn and his staff have done. In recruiting here, and namely at the wide receiver position. So Ryan Finley all smiles on that sideline. Finley, who threw the ball against South Carolina at an alarming rate. As the field goal from 38 yards is no good. Finley set a school record in that first game against South Carolina with 45 completions. And we'll be back after work from your local ACC station. You're watching ACC football presented by Mellow Mushroom. Next Saturday, ACC Network Game of the Week presented by Mellow Mushroom heads to Atlanta as the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets host the Pitt Panthers. Pat Narduzzi's Panthers facing two straight top 10 teams coming into that game. First conference game of the season as they take on Georgia Tech. Their game this week against Central Florida was canceled because of the events in Florida. We certainly want to extend our best wishes to, wishes to all of the folks affected by the hurricanes in both Texas and Florida and all the people who did great work to make sure everybody was safe. The adjustments have been made in the schedule significantly for Miami and Florida State. They will now play October 7th at Florida State as that game was postponed. Uh, Clay Hendricks right there, uh, the coach at Furman. I think this is going to be a good football team. They're just really young. He had an idea that this was going to be a tough, tough matchup today with NC State's front seven. We talked about how good they are. One of the tops in the country, I think. Uh, but his young team has, a, has accorded themselves pretty well. I think that they've done a nice job of battling, grinding. They've made some plays. They're going to get better just because the youth is going to learn from opportunities like this. And that guy completely committed to the Herman Palladin football program. I think they're going to be ultimately be pretty good. This is going to be a tough, tough season potentially because of the youth. But uh, make no mistake about it, Furman is going to be good. Coach Hendricks in his 24th year at Furman as a player and coach in over 30 years experience at the collegiate level in coaching these young men at Furman University. Here's our stat of the game, brought to you by Galaxo Smith Klein. Third down conversions, really pretty good. NC State, uh, very good. But Furman, if you're around 50%, that's pretty good. So that probably didn't tell the, the story of the game. What a great throw right there by Roberts. Cam Tom. Burnett made the catch, Dave, and that's 12 yards. Boy, the accuracy on this throw by Roberts on the move to the outside. You can tell a lot about the character of the team, and, and a lot of times we talk about how the character of the team is the extension of the coach. Look how hard Furman's still playing. I mean, this game's over for them, has been over probably for a quarter, but still competing and, and making plays, doing things at a high level, pretty impressive. This program, national champs back in 1988 at the 1AA level, as it was known. Also played in the championship game in 85 and 01 in 85. Coach Hendricks was involved in that game. That was the last year that these two programs met on the football field. This one's going to go 
to NC State. It's funny when you look at the history of the series, Dave, that Furman leads the series overall <laughs> with eight wins, four losses, and four ties. It's going to be eight wins, five losses, and four ties after today. Second and seven, the ball is on the turf and loose at the 45-yard line. Officials taking a look and they'll give the ball to NC State as they cover. Well, there's a lot of high risk when you run the option. This was kind of a low pitch from Phillips. A little bit tough to handle down low, down around your waist, thigh level. So he had to reach out, it was out in front of him. Like that ball to be right on the numbers if you can, just out in front so you can run downhill with it, but uh, tough. Fans, your local Toyota dealers want you to, to go to the 2017 Dr. Pepper ACC Football Championship game. Visit the ACC.com slash Toyota tickets to enter for two tickets and a pregame photo on the field. If you've never been to field level for a collegiate or professional football game, it's just a different view, and you really get an idea of the violent nature and the physical confrontation that teams go through when you get down the field so even if it's for warm-ups you still get that look if you win that sweepstakes day is that is that picture with you <laughs> picture with big tom well, maybe you look a little finish. wormy on tour <laughs> too if i get some of that i didn't finish reading the card yes in fact it is with me Dave. i'll be there that's a, that's enough december awesome 2nd charlotte north carolina back at bank of america stadium will nc state be there out of the atlantic division it's going to be tough dave considering the teams that are also in the division with them. Louisville, Florida State, and Clemson. And I would think that NC State probably thinks, you know what, they have to play us. It's going to be tough for them to get there. That's got to be the mindset you have here at NC State. Take a look at our matchup to watch today, courtesy of your Honda dealers of the Carolinas. We're talking about Notre Dame and Boston College. Yeah, one of, the, one, of the, one of the great rivalries, really. Kind of an early season rivalry, NC State and D.C. Played back, as you said, back in 15. And what was designated as a home game for Notre Dame. And they're playing at Fenway Park. I don't know they figured that one out. Well, the team at Fenway Park right now is doing pretty well in the American League East. <laughs> yes, they are. Indians finally lost. Cleveland Indians. 22 in a row. It's a great time of year, really, if you're a sports fan. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than this. Especially if you're an NC State fan today, Dave. I don't think there was a whole lot of trepidation about the outcome of this game, but you still have to put the game plan together, roll the football out there, and make sure you execute. Well, in all honesty, Tom, this, is a, this might be a tough game to get ready for if you're NC State. Young kid, 18 to 21. Well, I got Florida State looming next week. You think, okay, if, gotta, if we're going to win our side, we're going to win the Atlantic, we have to beat Florida State, Clemson, and Louisville. You just mentioned that. And here comes Furman, who's tricky because it's a different kind of offense. You don't see it every week. And Furman made some plays. You can tell that, that Furman certainly is a team that could cause some teams some problems. So good for NC State to kind of lock in, limit the big plays, and get them themselves into next weekend with a lot of confidence. They will go to Tallahassee, as I mentioned, last year a close game. One of those close losses for NC State, 24-20. They held Florida State game to 63 yards rushing in that game with the very stout front line that they have for the Wolfpack. And they're not going to disappoint again this year with that front four. It's going to be the last play of the game in the final seconds. They're going to tick off the clock 49-16. Don't forget, victory formation, our post-game show on the ACC.com. Stan, Tommy, and Katie with them. Our host in our Charlotte studio is Jalen Samuels. Has three rushing touchdowns, and the pack is now 2-1, and 2-0 and oh at home with the 49-16 win over the Furman Paladins, who will head to Hamilton, New York, next week to travel to take on Colgate University. Very clean performance, Tom, by NC State. Didn't turn the football over, took away the football. We're virtually penalty-free. Solid effort to go into Tallahassee next weekend with feeling pretty good about themselves. And let's go down to DJ Shockley. All right, Coach, you had a pretty good performance there in the second half. Your team showed up uh, offensively, five rushing touchdowns. What was the key to getting your run game going today? Execution, uh, getting our starting five back out there helped too, but these guys picked things up and moved them off the football. The backs ran hard. We finished plus three turnover margins, so we protected it. It's good. 
Defensively, you did a great job of getting after their quarterback, create some turnovers in that second half. Obviously, is that what you guys want to do going forward? Yeah, I mean, we should have covered them up in the first half a little better. We just took our eyes off some of their orbit motions. But uh, that's a tough offense. They're a good team. They do a nice job. So proud of the way the guys played four quarters. Coach, you're getting into ACC play next week. What, what do you think the idea of your team is going to be going into next week? Well, that's what it's all about. You know, we're looking forward to competing. You know, we start with Florida State on the road. It's a great football team that we get to play. I know our guys will have a lot of juice this week in the building. All right, Coach, thank you. Impressive win. Congratulations. Go back. <laughs> Go back. All right, guys, back up to you guys up top. Impressive effort by Furman. Even better effort by NC State creating those turnovers and also getting five rushing touchdowns on the day. DJ, thank you. Here's our performance of the game. It's brought to you by your local Chevy dealers, Jalen Samuels. It's funny, Dave, just 16 yards in total, but he took it into the end zone three times. Yeah, and it's not just his ability to touch the ball. is The opponent is aware that he's on the field, and where is he? Because they know they want to get him the ball. So a lot of attention, resources are kind of dedicated to taking away Jalen Samuels, or maybe even, first of all, finding him. So I think that they... Uh, even though the numbers might be limited as far as yards, he scored three times and he affected the game in so many different ways from trying to cover up to make sure he didn't hurt him anymore. Dave, how quickly does NC State turn around? Thinking about Florida State and the trip to Tallahassee right next now. Week. <laughs> right now. They, they're already <laughs> thinking about the Seminoles. It's, they've lost a couple of heartbreakers to the Seminoles. They've beaten them here before back in the day with Russell Wilson. So... You could bet they're thinking about the Seminoles right now. Yeah, the Seminoles have had the layoff because of the weather situations in Florida, so they'll get back at it as they host NC State. Once again, our final, 49-16. For DJ Shockley and Dave Archer and our entire crew, I'm Tom Wormy saying so long from Raleigh, North Carolina. Let's go to Katie in Charlotte. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tom. Well, you heard, guys, uh, with Coach Bowden and the former <laughs> linebacker, Stan Norfleet, you heard um, both Dave Archer and Tom Wormy talking about how quickly does NC State turn this one around. And the one thing that we talked about was the possibility this could be a trap game. It didn't look like it was a trap game for NC State today, Coach. Well, well Dave Dorn's got to be pleased because it could have been a trap game in the sense that they could have, I don't think they could have lost, but they could have played sloppy. Uh, Ryan Finley, 22 of 27, 231 yards, one touchdown. And then they played well on defense. They gave up one big play so I think Dave Doran's got to be pleased with their focus and now they get ready for Florida State but they've got to feel good at least for this next six days about their performance. So Dave Doran is pleased. Yeah. What was the biggest takeaway for you from the pack? Uh, well again this is when about the way that I thought it would. Furman would hang around for a while. That triple option can cause you fits. Had just over 100 yards rushing but Coach Doran went to the teeter and found that meat and hung it out there and the fellas only allowed <laughs> what three points uh, in the second half there, they didn't allow a rushing touchdown all day. This triple option, being able to minimize that was huge. You got out of there injury-free. Bradley Chubb was continuously disruptive. Not a huge stat line, but he did add to his tackle for loss numbers. All in all, it was a fine-tuning, getting ready for what's coming up in Tallahassee because I believe Florida State plans to run the football. They aren't going to let that freshman quarterback All right, before out. we look ahead, though, let's look back at what just happened. You mentioned some of the guys. Well, we've got to kick it off with Jalen Samuels. You saw his numbers there at the end of the game. This is second quarter coach, a one-yard run, and he sticks it in. Uh, he's a jack-of-all-trades. Plays a little tight end, a little fullback, a little tailback, a little wide receiver. Call him an H-back. Uh, jack-of-all-trades, a master of none, but he does does them really well. Here you see the long pass to the uh, busted, the only poor play of the defense all year, the busted play by the defense. And then I mentioned it, Samuels doing it on the ground. Look at that, 16 rushing yards. All three of his scores, though, Stan, were on the ground. It's about getting the end zone. That's why I'm not a guy that really cares a whole bunch about uh, the statistics of yardage. Did you score or did you not? And this one, a big play. Anytime your defense can put points on the board, you have like an 80% chance or greater in winning that football game. Shane Boone with the pick six, 47 yard return. This one ended up 49 to 6 thing. Uh, we have to mention, Stan, you did mention it. Uh, looking ahead to next week, they're playing Florida State. Florida State's off this <laughs> weekend, so you know that Jimbo Fisher and the Seminoles were watching this one. What did they see, Coach? Well, they saw a team like, say, it's got a lot of weapons in Jalen Samuels, Ryan Finley. Uh, Florida State has got to be concerned right now about how efficient Ryan Finley is playing. He's really accurate. Uh, he's ranked NCAA uh, in the, with the NCAA as far as amount of completion. So, again, uh, Florida State's concerned about the quarterback. Real quick, if I'm Jimbo Fisher, I'm not only worried about Ryan Finley, but I'm also worried about that defensive unit. Rosebud, along with Chubb and others, they can get after you that passer. 
It was a fun one in Carter Finley Stadium. The final 49 16 NC State over Furman. For highlights and must see moments from this game and others, make sure to check out the ACC.com. Don't forget, we have a new post game show, Victory Formation. You can check that up at ACC.com. Join us for the Blitz next week, powered by Ram Trucks. You have been watching coverage of the ACC, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. Thanks for watching.